Hey okay. guys. <laughs> hey everybody. Welcome, welcome. Got special guest, Dr. Amy Salano in the house. I'm so excited to have her. Hello. What's that? I said hello. Oh, hello, hello. Um, thanks for coming. Hey Mez, thank you, Maz. We got Sleuthy in the house, squirrels. Melmac. So can you see the chat or you're just seeing what I'm putting up on the screen? So oh, that's why I know. Yes, I do. I see no comments saying it was an accident. Stop using her for money. We're not. Don't worry. We'll <laughs> we'll address that. There is no money coming in, so don't worry about that. Yay, Sleuthy. What time is it at your house? It's, it's Latina Hi Teresa. Teresa, I want you to know that my grandmother's name was Teresa and my sister's name is Teresa. Oh, nice. Teresa. And I think I've seen you. I think you're the one that sits in the car sometimes. Is that right? No, no, no. That's a different Teresa. Teresa. That's um criminality. She'll have criminality with I her. see. Okay. Um but thank you, girls. I need a blessing. Bless blessings to all of you. Yes, thank you. Helen, Natasha. So, um, yeah, this is Dr. Latina. That's what um, her real name's uh, Dr. Amy. Well, I know, just but she changed my name. I mean, I can put slash Dr. Latina. Yeah, you could do that just so people know yeah. who you are because you'll see her in chat. And, yes. And, um, yeah. Hey, unsolved cases. So, yeah, I don't even know where to start. We we got a lot of. Uh, who is everybody doing this evening? I think everybody I've been is. really looking forward to coming up here. I wanted to say a couple things. I don't know if this is how I do my name. I did not know. And she started, but you didn't just start your channel because I remember you had some videos up before that, but then you took like a long break. But she I you did a lot break. of personal things happening, job, work, family. Oh, and your channel's under Dr. Latina. So yeah, you should put that up there too. I wasn't even thinking that. Don't Amy, I'm sorry. My pet. What's that? I said, don't fret my pet. Okay. What are you thinking? How that? Yeah, that's good. Definitely. So yeah, if you guys want to go check out her channel, it's under Dr. Latina. Um Hi, I know Jamie. Oops, I'm sorry. I think oh. Jamie's actually doing dialysis. I don't know if it's currently as we speak Jamie. or if this is in general. Where do you see that? Uh, oh, where do you a, see Jamie? Oh, yes. right here. I don't know. It went fast. Oh, slow down chat. Okay, I'll slow it down. Um, I just never know what to do because I don't know. I kind of judge it by how many people are here. I'll put it at 90. And just so you guys know, it's when you're if you type in chat and it doesn't show up, it's just not because you're blocked or anything's been removed. It's when slow chat is on. And um actually members bypass it. It's a nice perk for members. I mean, you don't have to. I'm just saying it is for members. You don't have to. It's just the way that it's built into YouTube. I have no control over that. But um, hold on. Let me slow it down. Well, I don't know if Jamie, uh, Jamie said that she was on dialysis. And I don't really know if that means as we're speaking, she's sitting there and we're entertaining her. Or is it in general? Does she want to answer that? Because if it's as we're as here, we could make jokes and make her laugh. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even see see that. Hold on, let me make sure I have some of those questions ready. Okay. I'm, I am glad you didn't miss the live. Okay. I had a couple things before we I know we're gonna dive in, no pun intended, but I wanted to say a couple of things. Just as oh, I love Teresa's beautiful. Um, she's got a beautiful icon. It with is. A that is gorgeous. Oh, Teresa, I do remember that. Do you need another one? Because I have more. I can, and actually, I now have journal. I've I've collected these fabulous, um, new, better, improved journal prompts, so that it, it really would make your journaling go better. So, if Teresa, the, the Teresa that has that beautiful icon, if you want me to mail you another journal blank journal and with the new prompts that i have maybe you could say yay or or no nay whatever you wish so hey so, hi hi dd great wow there's so many people here is that right yeah there is yeah don't I slow your 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 uh thoughts on all this because i know we got to move along like here. from all of our little you know non-medical <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, brains. No, <laughs> but the research we're doing, we're yes, all finding yes. like this it's seems right. odd. This yes, seems and, really and odd. I wanted to say a couple. I'm interrupting, but I did want to say a couple of things, if I might. Okay. Is that okay? Or yeah, no, that's fine. Go ahead. Thank you, Penny Couch, and thank you, Marlena Cantu. Thank you for joining. Oh, Marlena Cantu. Hola, qué tal? Oh, I never knew you looked like that. Beautiful blue eyes, Marlena. No, pretty eyes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to just as as a um, couple things as background in terms of um, me and in terms of um, my friendship with. Um, do you go by Zav Girl or Tiffany? Tiff. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel comfortable right. it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So um, I see that Savannah's asked about the Ventures humor. We will discuss that. I'll try to make this quick. I have been a member. Uh, I mean, I never knew that YouTube even existed until the pandemic. Um, and I was doing telehealth from home, which was about four hours from where I was working at the time. And for some reason, I, I don't know how it happened, but I came across YouTube and then somehow I came across true crime. And then I came across um, Zav Girl. And then I came across a few other channels and I got hooked essentially. And, and one of the things I was telling Tiffany tonight on the phone when we were just chatting briefly is that one of the most remarkable things over the past two and a half years that I have experienced in this community, I mean, there are many remarkable things, but one of them is I was so impressed by Tiffany's um, researching and, and uh, scholarly articles in areas that are well beyond her degree in psychology and her ability to take deep dives, to unpack articles. Um, you know, sometimes you mispronounce a medical word, who cares? It took me eight years <laughs> to learn some of these words. So in medical school and residency, but I was always impressed. And indeed, one of the first um, places that I went was on, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention other channels, but I did go on something that was brand new called Profiling Eva with Mike um, King. And I actually, I'm going to say I plagiarized, but because I acknowledged Tiffany is that girl in when I was speaking on that very first time I ever went on, like we're doing right now. And I said I had found this other very small channel at the time named Zap Girl. And that she, to me, as somebody who's, you know, rather nerdy and very into reading and, you know, that kind of thing, I was really, and I continue to be, you know, very impressed by the amount of energy, maybe too much energy, in, that you put into unroofing and, and taking deep dives into the literature. Because I think it is so easy um, in this community to respond just from a place of um, uh, emotion, right? And what I like about you is that you not only take do a lot of reading research behind the scenes before you ever come up. There are two more things I like. That you're willing to, to you're a humble person willing to say that you made a mistake. And that you correct yourself. I like that. As we say in medicine, we call it the practice of medicine. We don't call it, I am a doctor. I say I'm, I'm a family practitioner. I, I'm in the practice of medicine because we are always, it's an art and a science and we're always learning. And I like the fact that you are a lifelong learner. Um, so I just wanted to mention those things as far as background. Um, you know, one negative thing, because we don't want people to think, oh, she's just saying all this pie in the sky about Tiffany. No, I think if there's any downfall, which is very similar to myself or to me, is that we tend to, to, to go and look and look and look and look, and it's hard to let go and just go, you know what? We don't know the answer to this. We're done. So that's one area that I wish for both you and I, right? Uh, yeah. What do you think? I know I'm like jabberty jabberty thing. Well, thank you. That's a well, awesome compliments. Wow, thank you so much. Um, but yeah, no, I'm very excessive. It's my addiction, my addictive behavior in a way. Yeah. I feel like it's coming out in different ways because now I'm not using, but I do. I just have a that excessive type personality. So yes, I think that plays into it. It but. does, but that it, the first step is knowing that you and I tend to be that way too. I'm I'm rather a workaholic. And it's sort of like doing and doing and doing and it's like, stop. So yes, it's something that we have to work on each of us in our own little place in the world. Um, but 
I wanted to congratulate you on, by the way, on your six year anniversary of sobriety. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That was like two days ago, the 16th. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm really, these are big milestones. I know where, where you want us to move forward with the chat. I mean, with the questions. Um, Thank you. I appreciate it. Aww. I just wanted to say one other thing just about myself, if I might. Yeah. Um, and that is, um, can the doctor talk about hypoxia? Yes, we're going to talk about that. Is that I know I have gotten quite a bit of feedback, oh, through the years, even when I've been on different people's panels, that I tend to speak very, very slowly and precisely. And as I've told patients through the years, I mean, that is the way I learned English and the way I learned, I speak several different languages from my parents. And I think uh, because I, I do speak many languages, I try to be precise and probably I speak slowly because my grandparents that on my father's side didn't speak a lick of English. So when we did speak any English, we had to be very precise. So it's, I don't want folks to think <coughs> that when I'm very slow and precise, that it's because somehow I'm disrespecting you or I'm <coughs> sorry, trying to dumb down or something. It's just the way I speak. So that's it. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> so English was, isn't your first language then. Oh, it is. And we uh, spoke in the home um, or yeah, the care organ way. Oh gosh, we got it. We got to get going. There's so many questions. And then we grew up in the home speaking Italian and then my mother's people. Oh. <laughs> her mother came from Argentina speaking Spanish. I think she was around 10 maybe. And so my mom was of the generation where when you Spanish was considered, you don't speak it, you assimilate, you learn English. So her mother really only spoke it in the closet on the telephone, in the telephone closet with her sister. Um, but <clears throat> when I had my two children who are now 20 and 23, my mother made me make a promise. And she said to me, <clears throat> now I know, you know, I love dad. And God rest his soul. But, you know, I love dad. But we, you know, we've spent the first X number of years and 30, whatever, speaking Italian. And I did it for him. And I taught you all that. And But now that you're going to have your own children, I really want you to honor. This is my mother speaking. I really want you to honor my heritage. And I want you to bring up your children in Spanish do it bilingually so that you can celebrate the other part of who you are. And I made that promise to her. And so mm -hmm. there we are. Mm -hmm. So my name, Dr. Latina, comes from all of that and comes from the fact that until recently, I didn't speak any English, only Spanish all day long at work for 30 years because wow. of the people that I've worked with. So that's a little bit about me. And shall we, I'll stop talking now. <laughs> well, you're going to be talking more. What do you mean? But are you talking about, about uh, okay. Where do you want to start though? I mean, do you want me to put up any articles or do you kind of want to start with um, like generally or God, there are going to be a lot of questions. I'll try to star. The yeah. Questions. Can you star them or? Yeah, I can. I just started doing that. So I probably missed some. So if you guys ask a question already, ask it again and I'll try to catch them so I could star them. And then if we don't get to them right away, then. But some of I've seen, I definitely, I don't remember your names, but I definitely remember what you said. And it's, um, we're going to address some of those questions about um, asphyxiation, hypoxia, which is low uh, oxygen in the body, right? And we're also going to address the issues of, of lung weight in the water. I mean, we, we kind of have some things planned out here. And stay tuned if you decide you want to pop into my um, channel, maybe tomorrow or the next day. It's probably going to be a repeat of, of quite a bit of this. And then I'll, I may take a, an even deeper dive. I wanted you to see this, though. Jamie answered. Oh, but not, really? Thank you for super chatting. Oh, wow. You. You're so young. You know, Jamie, I was just saying that the best physical years and emotional years and professional years of my life were between the ages of 20, uh, sorry, 40 and 60. And then after 60, it kind of has fallen apart a little bit. Not so much, but I was telling Tiffany that I had the my children rather in later in life. And I have ha I had the most energy to raise them. I had the most energy professionally. And my body was in pretty good shape. So I'm hoping for you, Jamie, that 40 looks real young to me now. And I, you know, just pray that you are just 
taking those steps and moving forward with courage. Um, sorry. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you to outside girl for joining too. So Jamie, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll make it a little bit more, um, pleasant for <laughs> going through that, listening to us. I don't know. I can't, oh, no. can't even imagine, you know, um, so do you want to start with the lung, like stuff about the lungs or I don't, I don't know what, what you think. Cause I want you to do your more in depth one on your channel. So we'll just pick well, out some like a couple of things. I think, first of all, my role that I see for me as a person and as a professional on this, in this community is try to present, like I said, evidence-based information and not to be judgmental. It's very hard. And I think with this case, there's been there. It is multi-layered. Forgetting the YouTube community, the the mystery, the in some ways likely cover up by authorities, the secretiveness, the the lack of uh, friend or let's say the friend code that girlfriend code that really seems to have been broken. I mean, there are so many levels, and it is very difficult to not stand in judgment about all of this and just throw our arms up. And I think for me, for me, what I'm trying to do is to present to you guys, you know, hopefully helpful information. I do have my personal beliefs about certain aspects of the case, but I really don't want to be out here standing in judgment. If I say something negative about the autopsy being a bit shoddy or sloppily done, it is said in the spirit of knowing that I myself practice medicine and every day I need to do better. And as I've, I told my children, from them, they remind me this, when they were in Catholic school, first, second grade, they did some shoddy piece of work. I remember Francesca put Francesca Salerno. I think she spent more time signing her name than actually doing the project. And what we said to her was, when you sign your name to something, it needs to represent and it does represent who you are. And so in the spirit of that, when I make potential criticisms of either law enforcement or an autopsy, it is not to disparage law enforcement or the physicians or medical examiners or parents. It is not to berate them. It is to take a hopefully fairly objective look and say, how can we learn from this horrible tragedy? And how can we shine light on the pretty obvious errors along the way that happened? And how can we individually and as a community move forward to make our own real communities where we live, to help our own children be better people? And as my daughter Francesca said to me just recently, she sees sometimes the YouTube community, crime community is very binary. Everybody's good or everybody's bad. The parent is horrible or the parent is excellent. Law enforcement sucks or they're blah, blah, blah. And really in life, nothing is all or none. We all live in those gray areas. And honestly, I mean, I am a person of faith, but and that's why I say there for the grace of God, Go I as a parent, because I have made my share of mistakes. And as Francesca always says, you know, get, having a kid doesn't come, or a baby doesn't come with a guidebook. You know, you got to, you kind of have to make it up as you go along. And it's so difficult. So that I just wanted to just say that. So as we plow into these answers or questions, I want you to know from where I come, which is I am somewhat critical of different things, but my goal is not to disparage to berate, I back the blue, but in backing the blue, we need to have the courage to make and to give feedback. doesn't have to be, I back the blue and they're perfect or they suck. So. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to, um, here, I'm going to bring up the autopsy or do you want me to bring up one of the articles first? Do you think? I actually have some of them all paired up. Um, no, I agree with what you said and uh, everybody in chat was appreciating everything. Um, okay, this is a mess. Poor, poor you. This is the wrong one. <laughs> this What's talks. That? No, I just want to just, you know, What's say, a mess? 
the talks report. I feel honestly, oh, the talks report. I've reviewed probably thousands of talks reports. This one is messy. It's not. It's. It feels what I say obtuse in that it's not clear as it should be, and nobody, including the physician reviewing, have to call a laboratory to go now. Exactly where do you stand on this? And what was done? And uh, and have a lab go. Well, you can assume that we did these things. I don't want to have to assume. We we don't want to assume. And so I give you props for having spent so many hours trying to figure that thing out. Well, it's important because I wanted to know um, about the fentanyl. And, you know, when I went back through the autopsy, the Watts autopsy, they did a more thorough one on Kylie's with the tox screen. They did a they, the test that they did to test way more analyzed than oh, yeah. they did on the Watts. I do remember that. Because they have, a, but it's listed a little bit different. It's the same really? lab, but it's a different test. It's one of the smaller tests that they did. They still covered all the basics, but the one they did on Kylie, they covered like everything. I mean, not every. I shouldn't say everything, but they covered a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even think that. It, it, and that is true, and I give them kudos for that. But where it fell short for me is in the fine print. I mean, for to have to sift through all of this, and then to basically have to make an assumption that if it didn't come up positive in their writing we can assume it was done and it was negative. And I think in this uh, epidemic that our nation is uh, going through with fentanyl and given the fentanyl epicenter of um, Placer and Nevada counties, as well as the recent arrest of that 20 year old drug dealer who gave something that was laced with fentanyl to a 15 year old girl mm -hmm. in I think it was Nevada or Placer County. He was arrested several days after Kylie. I think it was incumbent for them to kind of, because there's been so much obscure kind of poor communication amongst authorities to us as the public. I really think it should, it should have been that the narrative should have been very clear on that. Yeah. They should, they should have, they should have one of those as the, one of the listed ones on their like uh, examples. Of exactly. What they Yes, they have it for everyone. It's not specific to Kylie's. That's just how they do that. There's on that test, but they should. They need to include that on there. Yes, because fentanyl is such a big thing now. So maybe they'll alter it. Maybe we should write and be like, we really think you should. Uh, I think your your you good. You know, like, I, that's agree not with you. I think that's like so. So many people have been throwing their arms up, going, "What? What can we do? What can we do? What can we do?" What we could do, and I'm not really very, I'm not a political person. I'm not a, per, you know, I'm just a foot soldier. I just try to do my thing the best I can. But that would be a very constructive thing to have people give feedback to this lab and to say, you know, uh, cocaine is obviously still important, but fentanyl's got to be up there with what they said, you know? No, I agree. So maybe I will write them. That's and see. And we all can try to write them. Because be NMS so is a big lot. That's the labs that did Watts too. It's the same yep. lab. So it's like they're like the main one. Yep. Um. So I see that so, you're talking about. Okay, how do you want to start, folks? Well, I was going to ask that first question that we were talking about. Like, is there one gotcha physical finding on an autopsy that, that allows for the cause of death to be drowning? Is there one key thing that that it's like? exclusively like okay yep that's drowning because it, that you have that that's present so that means uh must be drowning is there anything like that with drowning no there is not and that's the problem and um, drowning as and if i'm repeating myself from my own little video i'm sorry but i think it bears repeating drowning and on autop on autopsy is a diagnosis of what we call exclusion in other words okay there's no head trauma there's no this there's no that there's no this there's no that and then you say it could be drowning. And then you look for a, what I call a constellation or like think of stars, not just one gotcha. Like you said, like Eureka, they're drowned. But you, you have to, it's like a puzzle. You have to find probably seven different physical findings, both with your eyes grossly or macroscopically and under the microscope, at least seven. And we can go through those. And we can say, do, do we see any of those on the autopsy? Now, one caveat is that some folks have said, well, this isn't the entire autopsy. It's just what was required for FOIA because you asked for this, right? And other folks asked. Yeah. So maybe they've held other things back. Well, guess what? 
if they're going to say drowning, then I, as a physician, I need to see something. And more than the one thing, because remember, it's not just a gotcha. There's one thing that shows she has drowning. I have to see more than one thing on this autopsy. So that tell we, us what, out of yes. these, what, ha, I, well, I can remember one thing is the, uh, the frost. Well, but besides that, is there anything in here? And look, it even says like the percentage, like that was present, that was not present. Um, yeah, this, and, but you mm -hmm. would think at least one thing. And yeah, I guess there was one thing, but. Well, a fentanyl overdose can also cause frothing in the upper airway in the mouth, by the way. Okay. So like we could make. A uh, table here for not for fun, but let but you know what I mean for for learning purposes and say well, let's look at the first thing that you said froth in the mouth right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, she had froth, but fentanyl overdosing can cause froth as well. So you can't go. She got froth. That's it. It's done. So let's go to the next question. Can you go to back to that list or can you? Yeah, no. Yep. I was trying to find the spot where it said the froth in here, but we'll that would there. be up in the um, the mouth area or respiratory, but now not respiratory. Can you go higher up? Forget. I know I've seen it somewhere. I do. Um, Any, anybody want to say where it is? Well, let's just read it here. I my cervical spine. No I think you've got to go even further up, I believe. Injuries. Well, no, because that would be right. Because that's external. Would it be? On, it wouldn't be an yeah. external, would it? You know, I probably should have highlighted that. I know I should have too. Yeah. Actually, yeah. shoot, I highlighted so much. So much. Hold on a second. If um, anybody is able to find the froth, I just want you to know that you're courageous. Well, mm -mm, battling all the conspiracy and clearing up the toxicology report. But some of us pay attention, others not. Well. I mean, I don't even know what a conspiracy theory is because maybe my saying that there's some shoddy work and poor communication and maybe there could be, you know, money buys violence kind of thing. Does that mean I'm a conspiracy theorist? I don't know. What do you think, Mark? I don't know. Thanks, Mark. Um, hold on. Let me just find this real quick. I think it's right... Did they say anything in the uh, thing, in the chat? Well, uh, no, I'm looking. Does anybody see where the froth is? Said it was higher up, maybe. Why me, though, says search for social. Search, oh, search the social for the froth? Under the social history, or? I don't. Mm, no. We'll get back there. No. I, but I know you want to prove it. Listen, we, if we've overlooked something, we're going to have to get back to it. Um well, I know it's in there because I was just looking at it, but it's driving me nuts. God, I should have had it highlighted. Oh, well, well you want to maybe talk about, start talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let, let me just back up and say that before you can say, did somebody drown, by the way, you know, there, there is a whole uh, method when you do autopsy. And by the way, I'm not a forensic pathologist. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can to explain this, but it, it is, it, it falls under that there's sort of a table that's made and it falls under um, drowning victim versus dumping. And dr dumping would be no matches. Wait, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, but look, when you type it in, I know it said that somewhere in here because I read it. I, I, let me look at mine because I, I, I highlighted that. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but Lucy get, like told me how to, I could look up in the word. Well, what would another word? Um, so, Lucy, do you remember where it was at? Because I know I read it in here because I was like, okay, she does have have one. I just wanted to see how it was worded so then doc, uh, Dr. Latina could uh, check it out and kind of explain that. Discoloration, the hyroid. If not, I'm going to check one more time. If not, we're moving on. I do apologize. She had a small amount of purge, which means purge. Vomit. That's it. That was purge fluid. That's vomitous. Okay. And that oh, could be one finding. So you know that could. So let me just go back, guys, to to drowning versus dumping. And a dumping would be some something nefarious happened to a person prior to them having been dumped, so to speak, in the in a place of water to hide them. Right. So you have to kind of say, okay, 
could somebody have had this because they were deceased already and they were just dumped in there versus were they alive and then they drowned in there? So that you got to kind of think of this sort of, um, so almost like a, a, a scaffolding and that, and so let's go now the internal froth and then there's external froth. Now in drowning, drowning, let's talk about drowning. First of all, everything that you see that Zav girl has highlighted. Oh, sorry, you wanted that up. Sorry. I was, okay. Has highlighted. These are some of the constellational things that we look for. With drowning, generally, the froth is a result of asphyxia, okay? And um, um, in other words, if the person goes into the water and they're alive and they go into water, be it fresh water or salt, salinated or salty water, especially if it's below 70 degrees, there is a reflex that happens when you go into cold water, even if you know how to swim, if you're dumped, if you're not, I won't say dumped, if you're alive and somehow have an accident, that reflex causes you from your nervous system to go, oh, it's, because it, it's a reflex. And so you, oh, and the cold, especially, and the, that water, we'll talk about it later, is considered in terms of decomposition and in terms of just water in general and reflexes for respiration, it is considered a cool to cold environment up there in, in, in uh, Place Air County. So once suddenly you, so you've aspirated potentially the water, right? You've breathed it in. You might also have breathed sediment in from microbes or bacteria from the water. So that begins to can begin to have a cascading like a, a effect. And then that water physically blocks your airways all the way down to the alveoli, the littlest, tiniest. And then you cannot get flow back and forth of oxygen into the bloodstream. And so when the blood is flowing through your lungs, you can't pass that oxygen. And, and hence you get, um, you get a, a backflow basically of fluid from your, it's very complex. You'd have to take a, you know, go to medical school or something like nursing school to understand all this. But the bottom line is the froth is a result. One of the results of asphyxiation. Okay. And usually, and we can get into percentages, but I, there's so many other questions that froth and it's often blood tinged is below this portion of your trachea. Okay, it's below. You don't see the froth generally from a drowning in your mouth. Okay, so then that, that external froth and internal froth, I'm not sure if that's what they're talking about there. I know you're still looking for that froth. I'm listening though. I'm listening. Okay, so but I kind of need that table to go back to. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, where are you at here? So, so let's look at the, uh, the froth. I'm not sure if they're talking about external froth being up in the mouth area because that is um and i don't believe that's what they're talking about the external froth because the frothing can also happen outside of what we call the lung parenchyma proper so you have your your almost like trees and branches within your lungs right and then you have the tissue which is the, the parenchyma and so froth and bogginess of the lungs um occurs. And so those two froths are, would be two, let's say, call them stars of the constellation towards, uh, pointing towards drowning. Got it? But froth in the mouth is not generally because, um, or it could be with other things like a fentanyl overdose. So let's look at if we everybody's looking up the internal froth and the external. It's not 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 present in yeah, 70, yeah in seventy. Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. I wanted, oh, you're doing the percentage. I was going to show Kylie how it's not present. Okay, go yeah, ahead. not 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 present in seventy seventy seven percent um internally down in, in from the this portion of the trachea downwards is not present so therefore if it is present 17 percent that might point towards but she didn't get a star on that one let's put it that way right 
-hmm. and she didn't get a star on any other froth around the lungs or organs, right? So it's not present, not present, but still many drowning victims don't have that. Now let's go to the third one, guys, and that's aqueous, meaning water, gastric in the stomach, content. In drowning victims, water, so when you, in, you're, it will also, you, you aspirate it into your lungs, but you often will aspirate it not aspirated, you will swallow water from, let's say, a lake or an ocean, and it will go into your gastric or stomach, right? But it's only, you know, approximately 50% of the time. So go back now, I wish we had a split screen, to her autopsy, and let's look at, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, oh, wait, wait, GI tract. Sorry, GI tract? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Gastrointestinal system. So let's look at this, guys. The esophagus and stomach are patent, meaning open. They're continuous, so they're not blocked, and they're normally developed. They're saying, really, the main, here, let's go. The stomach, third, third or fourth uh, sentence here, right under, yeah. The stomach contains a trace amount of particulate, meaning little pieces of food, consistent with small fragments of peas or beans. That's what's in the stomach. So here's the question. Do we see any liquid in the stomach? Anybody? <laughs> Chat? No. no. Right? Do we see any lake material, any water that that's, could be from a lake or an ocean or anything like that? Guys? No. No fluids, as somebody just said here, fluids. So, no, we don't see that. Okay. No, thank you, Capri. I am so glad we have a doctor here. Now, I don't know if I'm helping. And I, I told you guys, I speak really slowly. And it's not because of anything more than I also want to, you know, I have to go. This is how I think. I have to methodically kind of look through this. Okay. So let's, can we go back to the table now? All right. So let's, let's review. She doesn't get a star for the internal froth. No star for the external froth. Aqueous water, i.e. not water that you've had to drink or alcohol or Pepsi Cola or anything like that. They mean from the aqueous, from the water environment. Gastric content with bloating. No. So no star for that. Now we're going to jump over for the moment. We're going to jump over the emphysema, which is sort of a, a ballooning kind of finding that you see at the microscopic histological or tissue level under the microscope. We're going to jump over that. We'll come back to that. Now let's go to bulging lungs. So bulging meaning heavy, dense, bloated. Yeah, there you go. Well, I wanted to make a remark. I got an email from them specifically about the case and did you watch my video? And it, no, they confirmed that was the test done. And it was specifically about the Kylie case because I said I, I requested a FOIA request. It said in there that you could request the total list. Right. I showed my email on that video that I uploaded yesterday, the email you from did. NMS Labs. And I specifically asked for Kylie Rodney and they sent me the link to the test that they did. So yes, we can. And then the that girl I called, cool. she explained how to read a test and all the little things on the test. But it, we didn't specifically say it was Kylie's, but I did name the stuff that was on it specifically. And she said how to read it. But yes, I did get a, a confirmation on Kylie. So, no. You're okay. Right. However, the, no, I don't. Okay. See, I don't see is wrong or right here. Uh, the Rockaways, I agree with you and I'm so glad you called. But can you imagine if 2 million people called that lab to find, f for clarification? We, the lab would be overwhelmed. And so in that sense, the raw, I agree with the Rockaways. We can't all be doing that. It should be more clear. And it wasn't documented, you know, very clearly there. So I understand that perspective as well. All right. So are we going to bulging lungs now or what are you reading? Yeah. You said, I don't know. I was reading chat, but I thought you said oh, you wanted to skip this or did you want to do this? That, let's go to the bulging lungs. Okay. So, okay. so it's only present in about 24.4%. Okay. Bulging no, really, we really have to read what bulging means. I'm more interested in the weight of the lungs. 
And I'm going to talk about that in a, yeah. The right lung weighs 100 grams and the left lung weighs 110 grams. Now, those weights are normal for a young woman of her stature, weight, and age. That is normal. So the grand total that it would weigh for her is 210. And that's normal for a person who's up and around and walking at that age. However, if you look at many studies, not just this study that we're, we're presenting here, but many other studies, and also studies that compare salt water versus freshwater drownings, the weight of both, they, they use a sum of the right lung and the left lung, and generally the right lung generally weighs more than the left because there are three lobes in the right and only two in the left because the heart, the way developmentally, you can't have part of your lung over the heart. So generally, like, yeah, thank you so much for doing this, Zev. The oh, fresh water, here we go, type of water. She was in fresh water. Let's go over, guys, to the combined. It's way, I'm pointing as if you all can see me. You can't, but go right, way over to the right. Keep going, 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 going. Yep, stop. Generally, they in auto, they look at separate, but then they the, a lot of studies take the right and the left lungs together for a sum. And so the mean or the average is 1,200, we're going to say 37 grams. Plus or minus one standard deviation means it's like a bell curve. It can be as much as almost 500 grams more or 500 grams less. But the average, 1237, what was hers? What was Kylie's? 210 together because one weighed 100, one weighed 110. There you go. So that to me is like, what? Especially, you know, some people are like, well, she was decomposed and she was down there for a while. Yes, you take that into account. But being submerged and having aspirated, et cetera, et cetera, and drowned, you, that it would eclipse the de decomposition, bringing her lungs back to normal size. And I say that because there's not so, so, so much decomposition at the organs, if you look. So to me, that was like a red flag. Like what? The lungs only weigh 210 grams together. That doesn't make sense to me for a drowning. Do folks follow this? Yes. Gemini 65 says that seems underweight from what you would expect and not waterlogged. Correct. And part of the waterlogging bogginess is not only be, having been submerged in the osmosis and the back and the forth and all of that that happens um, on a sort of uh, osmolality, osmolarity level, but it also has to do with, remember, what happens when uh, when you have asphyxia, that uh, fluids end up outside in the lung parenchyma more than they would in the bloodstream. It's, it's very complex. So that is a red flag to me. All right. I was trying to find and the one where it's... The same thing. Copper... Do you mind if I'm reading also? No. Okay, no, so, not at all. I, yeah, I this is another article that you sent me about the uh, the lung weight and stuff. Yes. I don't know. This one, I believe, was is mostly. This is a, a a seminal article. I think this is the one that was mostly done on men. If you look at the end, but I don't. No, I found the one on the women though. It, good. Okay. This is the women one. I had to find it. Yeah. We looked at. So um, go ahead. Can you read that for us. Okay, so so okay, so we have. Actually, let me make that a little bit bigger. Okay. But Capri, I don't know if that's how... I know in Italian we say cap, Capri, or and some people say Capri. So I don't know. But Capri said basically nothing's really adding up here. I believe that's kind of what you said. So the right lung mean weight... But this isn't from drowning victims. This is just their weight, I'm pretty sure. The right lung mean weight is 340. Left lung mean weight is 100 or 299. But... The range for the right lung is 142 to 835. The range for the left lung is 108 to 736. Yes, but so, go if you go up, it says the average age. Whoa, whoa, whoa stop. Oh, wait, I, know, wait. I just wanted to see what this oh, sorry, was. I just was trying to see if it was drowning or no. But, okay, what do you need? The average the decedents or the dead person, the decedents average had an average age of 24.4 years. 
And was this women or? Yeah, this one's females. Look, adult females. I found a female one, yeah. Um, and the decedents, okay. And it is not, other seminal studies or important studies have shown that it is not necessarily based on your body mass index. In other words, these averages are gender specific or let's say sex specific, female versus male. But many studies and the important studies show that if somebody is 110 pounds and another young woman of the same age and height is 210 pounds, the weight of the lungs, and we're not talking drowning weight, we're just talking regular weight, is not very much different. Can I ask you the question now? Because this kind of pertains to, it goes back to the, the Chris Watts uh, autopsy, but it's about this weight. And I wanted to ask you something, if that's all right. Sure. I don't know if okay. I can answer. I'll do the best I can. No, you're the, she doesn't know the, some of the questions I'm going to ask. So um, from doing the research, from studying this autopsy, I learned that the left lung weighs less because it has to, it shares space with the heart. And Excellent. the right lung weighs more. But in Kylie's, it's the opposite. In Kylie's, the... The yeah, that's unusual. More, okay. Yeah, see, that is unusual. Okay. No, no, no. And, left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I was going through the Watts autopsy, which we're gonna yeah. use this as a thing for a couple, well, we're gonna like use a this point of reference or another example. another example. Yeah, but let me just show you. This is the part I want to hold on. Eight ninety five. Okay. So why is Shanann's the same way? Her left lung weighs more. Is this a clue in maybe how they died? Does it have something to do with how they died? Ooh, I mean, why no, would the left? I, mean, I don't know. That is interesting. I can't. No, now, now we're you in. You know, Shanann was strangled. Just for those you didn't follow yeah. this case, Shanann was strangled. Now, Bell and Cece both have it the right way where the left lung weighs less. But Shanann is the left lung weighs more, just like Kylie. Which so is, just, un it's. Yeah. So is it a clue, maybe? Should we kind of look um, into that? No? I think it's okay. um, it's an unusual finding. But I don't think you can make, um, like, even to say sloppy or say it's wrong based on one or even two now examples. No, I mean but, a clue in how that maybe Kylie died. Since no. we know how Shanann died, does it have anything to do oh, with it? No, because I'm going to tell you, I've already looked at the whole possibility. I mean, this is why... I mean, guys, we could take 25 hours and do this, and we're not going to, but I've looked at the some of the pathognomonic or some of the the sort of things we look at in strangulation, and and um, I shouldn't have that. So, no, is the answer. But something maybe similar. Okay. Because okay. maybe, like, it, it does something to the lungs, but okay. All right. I just was curious. I was like, wow, that's... She has that too. Okay. All right. So let's yeah, go back I mean, to we, we can do a whole other thing on the autopsy. In fact, I'm I'm working on some on something right now, nothing to do with true crime committee, but I'm talking professionally, uh, reviewing an autopsy where we're trying to decide, looking back, whether it was, you know, did the person die from hanging versus did the person have an external pressure put. And that's a whole, there are other, there's specific findings in both of those. So actually one more thing though. So, okay. You said for her weight and her, well, no, for her age, it's kind of normal to small lung weight. But if you look at Bell and Cece, they have a bigger lungs than her, than Kylie. Do you find that kind of weird? That is weird. Hey, let me just show you real quick. You know, guys, yeah. I want to see look, that. Here's, this is uh Bella's look long way, 160 and 140. Oh, Cece's even younger. Let's see how. Let's okay. see what Cece's Wait, let me think. How old was um, Bella? She was uh, five, right? It's uh, interesting. Remind me. Oh my God, it's been so long oh, since. I know Cece was three. I, th I mean, it's been no, so long since I covered this case. Maybe I'm that not. That does give me pause, child. That does give me pause. It's like, hmm, that's interesting. Look, Cece, 160 and 100, 180, 160. Both. Yeah. Let's see how, for sure how old they are. Hold on. I think three and five is why it, is what I'm remembering. Three years, Cece's three years, bigger yeah. lungs than Kylie. Okay. Good. Okay, guys. You know, uh, I have to be very careful. But you know, you well, I I have to be I have to be careful with my. Um, oh, Bella state. was four. Bella was only four. So four, a three and a four year old has bigger lungs than Kylie. Yeah, that's well, unusual. What are some of the signs of having small lungs, like. Is there 
wonder. Well, she's still within their normal range. That's the thing. Okay. There are ranges. So you can't say that this is totally abnormal. What speaks more interestingly to me is now I think we're on one, two, three. I think we're on our fourth star, so to speak, of this constellation for drowning. And the lungs certainly don't weigh 1,200 or even 800. So that, that points away from drowning. So that's what I would say about that. Ay, Dios. Okay. Is there any, do you want to move forward? Yeah. Um, okay. Hold on. Sorry. I'm just, okay. Which, which one do you want? What do you want to go to this? Back to this? So the bulging, I mean, they weren't floppy bulging. No, we, we know that flu, ah, uh, this fluids in the sinuses I want to talk about because this really is, um, even though the, the percentages right here, well, you'll notice, okay, guys, look at the fluids in the sinuses. And when we say this, there are many sinuses. You have your frontal, you have your max, and these are air pockets, guys, air pockets that are in connection with your respiratory system through your nose. I'm just going to keep it simple, stupid for me to explain. And you have, so frontal maxillary, you have your sphenoid sinuses, which are up in here. You have your mastoid, which are back here. And then you have, I'm, I've got to look back to say I'm saying this correctly, something with, in the middle ear, if, if you dissect that out, called the petreus sinus. So, in, and I'm going to talk about this later in a little bit in more detail in my own little video, supposedly 10 minutes <laughs> in the next couple of days. But You're going to have to make like 20 bars. <laughs> I'm gonna make 20 10 minute videos. <laughs> the sinuses, guys, has become more and more pathogmonic. And we know that because back about 10 or so years ago, and I could present the article if anybody wants it, there began to be studies done on what they call virtual autopsies, not what we're talking about now where they actually go and look with their eyes and they dissect and they look under the microscope, but something called a virtual autopsy. And that's where they take a particular type of cat scan and they scan the whole body, not, not x-rays of, of a, at post at death or at autopsy, but they take a cat scan. And what the studies show is that the sphenoid, the middle ear, because think of it, you're, you're submerged, right? And think about when you go swimming and it's all full of water, etc. The middle ear petrous sinus has has liquid in it. The sphenoid or sphenoid sinus, sorry, and the mastoid. And we know, and in one of the articles I read, they said that this is becoming more and more not just an add-on, but it uh, probably eventually will become an a standard adjunct not like oh we don't do an autopsy anymore but that you can get so much information from a cat scan of the body and one of the things that you can get is is there fluid in the sphenoid sinus from when the person <laughs> aspirated is there fluid in the mastoid which is back here and in the inner ear if if you dissect out uh, and i'm going to say the petrus but i'm going to look at my paper in a minute and that they found huge percentages of drownings. Folks did have the fluid in the sphenoid, petrous, and mastoid. What I noticed, so that's what this means, fluids in sinuses. Okay, now look at missing. Well, so you go here, 29% had it present or almost 30%, 28% didn't have it. But look how many didn't have it evaluated. Go go to the next line. 42%. And in Kyla's case, they did not. From what I can glean from what they documented, the, there is no commentary on dissection of the sinus areas, the inner ear. They did I maybe commented there was some fluid in one ear, but there was no comment vis-a-vis -vis fluid presence so it's missing so that's too bad so all right so we don't so you want to go to that if you, you go look at that yeah let's look at the um right let's see 
body cavities. Okay. Oh, there was a, a portion where they talk about that there was a dissection of the scalp area. That would be... Um, So is normal cephalic, interior chambers, the eyes, you know that. Oh, you're going a little too fast for me. So oh, I didn't okay. Both I didn't, what patent. Here, right here. Both nares on line 67. Go to line six. Both nares, which are the, the the airways of your your nas nasal fossa, we say, are patent, meaning open. There's no palpebral nasal fracture, fine. Other mid-facial bones are intact. So in other words, there's no trauma to the face. Ears are soft, symmetrical, small amount of fluid. Yeah, in the right, there I think that in the right external. I don't. I'm shocked. I remember this auditory meatus. The meatus is the canal. So a little bit of fluid, which one would expect from from being submerged. But the fluid in the in the sinuses has to do with aspiration or we aspirate and then we, you know, in Spanish we say, you know, it's going to sorber, like when you sniff kind of thing, if you've got water, it goes right up into your sinuses. I had that happen about two weeks ago, by the way, when I was swimming, huh? some kid came, I was doing my laps and I was on my back. Some kid came and, you know, was, didn't know how to swim and they were, blah, 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 and I was, went to breathe and the kid put so much water all over my face that I was like, <sighs> You know, I did, it was it's a reflex. And for the next three or four days, I could feel that I had fluid in my sphenoid sinus. Isn't that interesting? Uh, I, yeah, I found the purge right here. A small huh? amount of purge fluid is collected yeah. in the mouth. So wouldn't that check off this box, at least of one of them? Wouldn't yeah. that be, ex uh, what would that be? External froth, right? No, that's not external. That, no, that has in to do mouth? with. It would be, okay, go ahead. Well, no, then you go back to the, but the gastric content, but they're not talking about purge. They're talking. Uh, okay, purge I thought it was this. Oh, okay, I thought froth. Yeah, they're talking okay. about what you call vomitus. So what's froth? That's more like like blood. It's what blood tinged. Oh, okay. um, That's what I thought. Frothiness, and they did mention that there was a little bit there, purge. but okay. yeah, there. So she had some fluid from vomit, but there's nothing in the stomach. So I would give that a negative. Okay, all right. So where they they reflect back the um, skin of the scalp, there they do not go deeper than that in terms of looking at sinuses. Oh, this is clothing, so I don't think it's any more higher up. Minute. Nope. What's that? I'll comment about that in a oh, minute. It's not up higher because then the rest is just yeah. Okay. So you said you want to find the scalp part. Yeah. Just to show people that they're when they when they um hey, dissect there the we go. It's right here. Okay. The scalp is completely sloughed. That part sloughed, by the way. That's the one thing that you okay, sloth. Okay. But how would you know that? English is such a weird language. Due to Wait here. Keep going. Facial features. Wait, wait. I want to. Yes. It's distorted by decomposition and postmortem positioning. Eyes are discolored. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk, by the way. I know a bunch of people have asked about the vitreous, and we'll get there in a minute. Anterior chambers are discolored. Iris's definition pupils obscured. Conjunctiva vary from pale maroon to pale green. That is interesting. Okay. Because there are some findings. All right, we'll, we'll, this we'll, one right here. Why? What does that mean? Well, I, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. But I want to see where they talk about the dissection. Do you see that? Teeth. All right, guys. I just want to mention uh, it is very normal in drowning when the the gum area and the teeth actually become pink at the top. Go back up. You'll see it says from lividity. Do you see that? Here, um, I'm sorry, at line 71, I think it is, okay. have a pale pink stain from decomposition. Okay. That you that usually in drowning, or not drowning, in, I'm not going to say drowning, in submersion, we got to be careful with our words, it's, it's from lividity. It's from 
when if you by keeping your head down or what the way it's positioned after death, then there can be staining, pink staining. And people used to think that was pathogmonic. Oh, that's from drowning. Mm -mm. It's livid. It really is a chemical reaction that occurs and it's not a, because of drowning. I just wanted to point that out because up until maybe a decade ago, it was like, oh, they've got pink. That means they drown. No, that does not. Okay, continue. Now, do you notice that it says the abdomen, is, uh, you're at line 81 now, the abdomen is slightly distended due to post-mortem, post-mortem ga tissue gas formation. So that, that's usually from bacteria that produce gas. So that distension is not, N-O-T, not from bloating or from gastric contents from having in, you know, inhaled and ingested lake fluid. Okay. So that's important to know, right? I wanted to go back, but you tell me where you're going. I, I don't know. Are we done with these? I don't, I, where are you going is the question. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm just going with you. No. Um, Did we finish these yet? I'm what is not, this? not trying to make light of this, but this can be so, you know, this is such a tragedy that sometimes we have what's called gallows humor that you kind of laugh to sort of not cry. Um, so we went to the fluids and the sinuses. They did not check those. So we, uh, we don't know. <sighs> Adipus hair. And of course I've got to look, can you look at, I, I can't think what that is right now. Well, See, that's what I was just trying to find. And then one of these articles that lists all the description of them, that's what I was trying to find earlier, but I, I know it was taking too long. Hold on one second. Let me see. I had them all ready. Like I went through it right before and I, I was like, I'll remember it's right here. This is right here. And now that I'm here, I can't remember where everything is. I looked this up too and I bear with me, but there are other things for drowning that this article doesn't talk about, which I'd like to. Oh, I wanted to point this out right here where it says lungs typically, lung weights typically are increased in drowning deaths compared with other causes of death. One may observe combined weights of more than one kilogram for adults. So that's freaking, and why Kyle is so- I, I just reminded myself what the adipose hair was, and I'm sorry, I, I, I was focused on reminding oh, myself. Oh, sorry. Don't worry. No, no, no. Go tell me again. It just says that lung weights are typically increased in drowning deaths compared with other causes of yes, death. That's correct. But I mean, I just wanted to, I know you said that, but I just wanted you know, to show it that it's actually in here. It says, and wait, so. this is excellent that you highlighted this. One may observe combined. That's why I said generally we right. take right and the left together, right? Yeah. Correct. Yep. I mean, have one kilo gram, which is 2.2 .2 pounds. So one kilo, and that would be a thousand grams right and hers were 210 grams so you know that again no, does not point towards drowning the adipose air has to do with a wax like covering that happens um if you go back to to that little chart that you first presented to us or i did with you we've been working on this chatting back and forth that little yeah chart. i know i just wanted to find because didn't you want me to find the, the the what it was first or no you don't want me to the adipose hair hold on you, okay i was gonna find that list of where it describes what they all are but it for you. it's a waxy it's almost like if you think of a wax museum it's it's a chemical reaction that happens that makes tissue look waxy Oh, I thought you were asking me to do it a minute ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding. You know, I, you did understand me, but I, I got to it faster than you did. Oh, okay. I just, the reason I thought I would find it, and this is because it lists them all out somewhere on one of these where it, we could go through all of the, all the ones on this list, but I guess we'll just wait. Okay. So go ahead, explain it. All right. So the adipose, air, adipose, by the way, means fat. And if you think about fat and fat, like if you, cook it all and you pour off the grease and then it it congeals in your tin can which of course i still do the kind of old-fashioned but i do that and then we th we would collect our grease and then get rid of it that adipose air is that waxy white hard material from fat so adipose air 
on on the different organs is in drowning not present, not N O T not eighty eight point one percent of the time. So that's really a very soft, what we call a soft finding. It's very rarely found. And she didn't have that. Right? Now let's go back to emphysema, which is one, two, three, fourth, I think, on the list. And that in parentheses says histological, which means taking tissue into thin slices and actually looking under the microscope. And this is what is unclear to me, guys. And maybe folks can, we can go back to the... Um, autopsy because I don't see where they did any histolo histological test uh, look at so they didn't even look so I don't really know and look that is one of the hugest ones that I was looking for which is if you look there and the emphysema on the microscopic level and the tiniest tiniest little alveoli that you can only evaluate by microscope if y'all look, I, I say keep pointing, it's 68, can you find that? 68.1% of the time, it's present in drowning. What do you want me to find? What you just found right there. Oh, okay. 8.1. So do y'all, is everybody following me? Like, in other words, that's a big percentage. I mean, if you look through your little list down here on present, aqueous gastric con content, sorry, is present 45% of the time. That was not present. The emphysema and the tiniest little microscopic portions of the alveoli, six, fully 68% of the time in drowning victims, that is present. But I don't believe they looked for that. And as far as um, the sinuses, which we know from a virtual autopsy via CAT scan of the body of the sinuses or by dissection, which they didn't do, that is present a majority of the time in drowning victims, we have no information on that. Um, okay. So you want me to go back to that? Sorry, I was reading oh, chat. Um, Dr. Latina uses such fancy words. You know what's the problem? That's why I do often slow down because I was thinking about this. Medicine really is like a different language. When you say, oh, they had yeah. adiposity, they had asphyxia. I mean, it's all these words. And then I have to think about the fact that half my words do sound like fancy schmancy. And I'm so sorry. Uh, but yeah. I, I, really, I, I try to make it easier. Uh, not easier, but, you know, like put it into layman's terms or layperson's terms. And I just um, highlighted this part where I know you already said it, but I just highlighted some of the you know, important things. Some people may swallow water during the drowning process, but apparently not all. Decomposition will also decrease the volume of stomach contents. Yes, but um, completely. There was something so basically, the conclusion is that she didn't have any of those seven. <laughs> I don't think so. I, or we don't know. And as you know, I kind of said, I don't remember. This is all kind of a blur now, but I think in my video, I said the other day, if it, you know, in medicine, we learned that if it's not documented, it didn't happen. So I don't see, but then I, but I do want you to go back at the end. They make some little comments thinking maybe there are addendum, but I'm thinking normally like all the autopsies I've read in my life, when yeah. they do many, many autopsies will include within the autopsy proper, the micro the microscopic findings the histologic and that's not unusual for me to read and to see that and review that i don't see it in hers so that to me means it wasn't done okay um yeah guys i wanted to when we were talking about fluid or froth frothiness blood tinged in drowning victims when you do see the froth it's 94% of the time, it's found below the, I kept going like, which is here, below the level of the vocal cords. So it's lower down. And when we don't see that, that if you look, they say that it's patent or open. Um, the other thing that they find in, on, not um, by CT, but by actually, 
um, what's the word? Dissecting or open. We talked about the mastoid sinus and the petrus. Actually, our little small punctate little hemorrhages from, and that's thought to be, you know, chemical reaction from the liquid, the fluid, the pressure, etc. Then, and you can see, and I have photos, and I'm not going to offer that up here. But you can see from di in certain articles when that's dissected, the middle ear and the mastoid, which is posterior, which is back here, you can see these punctate hemorrhages, which show, uh, which which are associated with drowning. And again, that's something that's a lot of percentage, but we don't have that information on this one. Yeah, I can't find the one that all the stuff that I thought I was going to remember or I was going to remember where it was at. But so <clears throat> is there anything else that you want to look at in her autopsy? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. OK, um, this is hers. OK, so I talked a little bit but before I do, I talked a little bit about um, lake water versus salinated or salty water and I wanted to talk about the decomposition process. It usually does if you all factors taken into account, uh, decomposition does occur much more rapidly in warm water and warm being over 77 degrees Fahrenheit and also in salt water. And the research that's been done sort of bears out and points out to why the decomposition of a body is much more rapid in salt water versus lake water or river water because the salt is, makes a person buoyant or they can float. So a body will float and then it, it comes to the surface. You get effects of the sun. You get effects of predators that I don't want to get any more specific than that, but think birds, etc. So decomposition happens much more rapidly in salt water. In addition, you get effects of um, uh, like, you know, larger predators. You're not talking about little bitty fish, sharks, etc. So um, it is slower in cooler water. Okay. I wanted to look, did you want to look at some things? I wanted to look back at the autopsy, there were a couple things I wanted to kind of look and get an opinion on. Yeah, definitely. And don't for, I want to ask that number seven question. Um, it's not just me, but I think I may have spent. I didn't know that. Like, I want to know that too. Okay. So don't I'd like to know what that. Mark means that means by that. What's that? Did you see what Mark just, he did no. a little chat. Oh, wait, this one. Yeah. Is it not just me, but I think I may have spent $1,500 what do you mean by through super chats or ha, what do you mean by that, Mark? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I I'll, hope you, I'll look for your name. Oh, SJS. Um, what do I think the cause of death is? Undetermined. Do you remember that? AWP said they're going to, there are three possibilities in one of their later interviews with somebody on some channel said there, I think actually it was on uh, Chris Madonna. I don't quite, yes, maybe it was that there are three possibilities that they could come up with. One is accidental, i.e. an auto accident that she drowned. Blah, blah, blah. The other is undetermined, right? And then the other, the third is, what do they call it? Oh, I'm going to call it nefarious or criminal or suspicious, that kind of thing. And what I believe it was Doug from AWP said, if it comes up accidental, most of the people aren't going to believe it. If it comes up undetermined, people are still going to be upset by this. And if it becomes, if it, if they do say that it, it was something criminal or potentially nefarious, people are going to be like, then let's get to the bottom of this. Yeah. Um, and, and I did want to sort of do a parenthesis at this point and say, I know a lot of people have publicly in on chats and comments 
you know, been rather critical of AWP. And I can just tell you from my own, um, you know, experience as a professional that um, quite often people, whether it is an organization, an individual, a physician, whatever, can be muzzled. They can be muzzled either because they have a gag order. They can be muzzled because they've received counsel from a legal team on their part and they're told stay far away from this one or they can be muzzled out of fear of reprisal or or consequence if they speak up and what else could could call there was one more i was going to say why oh i was uh, i i was explaining to, to tiffany that you know one of the organizations that i worked for uh, everybody that signed up i mean had a contract including medical assistants, nurses, secretaries, but, but as we got higher in the food chain, so to speak, when you, you know, as a physician or a medical provider, we signed, you know, um, contracts that forbid us, forbid us from going on, having social media, unless it was only about our family. We could make no political statements, religious statements, statements about work, um, we were every employee also we signed off that we understood we could not use our texts or our personal cell phones at work. And that at any time, and this was done not to me, but other employees had their phones confiscated and that organization was that because they'd signed off allowed they, that organization was allowed to, to confiscate an employee's phone and to say, give us the password because you broke the rule and we want to see what you've been texting all day. Okay. So for me, like when I first came on uh, two years ago, I was at a an orga particular organization. I had to get permission from like the chief medical officer. I had to meet with her and say, I'd like to go on YouTube. There's this true crime community. And I had to explain to her you know, what things I would, and then it would not, I would not disclose, you know, anything about pay, obviously patients and stuff, but you know, they're very, they were very particular, excuse me, uh, around politics. And they had a certain politics that I might not have shared. We're not going to go into all of that, but I was definitely, unless you're like in private practice, which I now am, um, you are muzzled. And so I, I have great empathy for AWP. They were called in to find this precious, precious young lady. They did what they were asked to do. And they were willing to, to extract the car and the remains with the utmost respect um, and correct procedure. And they were told to back off. And from there, I think we cannot make any comment, I mean, I can't, about what, I think they want to speak. I think they have truth, but they're they're not able to. And I know from my own self in my life in different organizations I've worked for, I certainly was not going to say anything that I wasn't allowed to say. Um, yeah. So I wanted to bring that up. What do you think? No, I agree with what you said, especially about AWP when you've said that. Yeah, I do agree that that's the case with them. So I don't think we will be hearing anything. I don't think we'll be seeing that video. I think it's, they, you know, they got important work to do, and I think they're just going to continue what they're doing. Well, I'm not saying that the well, case isn't important, well, but... AWP, the Divers Union, well, that's a little snarky because I just finished saying, I don't know who's muzzling them. I'm imagining... It's just no, we, we're just saying our opinion, guys. My, yeah, make sure. And my my opinion is based on my own professional experience that organizations, individuals are told not to speak. They can be given gag orders by law enforcement. They can be told by their own counsel not to speak. Their own organization CEO not to speak, uh, or or there'll be there will be consequences. This is a reality. And I think, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah. And I can't even say, I'm thinking back, 
it isn't just, oh, you're a physician or you're, you're a diver or whatever. There were many people, everybody that I worked with in one particular organization, from the secretary, the janitor, everybody signed this clause that allowed for confiscation of their, of their and, and for entry by, by the organization into your own personal texting. It's incredible. Yeah, it is. Oh, and yes, I thank you, Dolly. I, I mean, you know, for me, it is, I am somebody who, I, you may find this hard to believe, but I'm an introvert. And so I generally step back. No, they said they were going to speak out on the case. I want I put that up because I never, where did you hear that? I know originally they did, but recently after the, the new report came out and everything that you, they said that after that, because what I heard, the last I've seen them was that post on the community where they just said that they're going to. I don't know. Back up whatever law enforcement said, but I mean, I'm not saying they won't for sure, but I haven't heard him say they still were. Have you heard something? Maybe I'm, I haven't been looking. Maybe I missed in the last couple of days. I don't know. I should look. Yeah. But may I speak to one of, I mean, there's so many, everybody's got such great questions and comments. It's unbelievable. But somebody just commented up about 17 things that maybe AWP realized that the Nick, the assist, I'm going to call him the tow truck driver. I know he wasn't, tow, but let's just call him tow. That maybe they, that they realized that he was not for real or whatever. And what I would say to that is that, before they ever put their video out, they were told this story by this guy, Nick, and they ha they clearly state that they had open communication with law enforcement. And law enforcement, ironically, wink, wink, uh, ironically told them, don't bother looking in Prosser Lake, which is the same thing that Nick was telling. So they went, they went that way. Now, if Nick was for a faker or if Nick was mistaken, don't you think, or it would seem to me, with the importance of open communication amongst authorities and amongst agencies and organizations and to the public, it is incumbent upon law enforcement to say, um, we did check out Nick and all that seems to have been amiss or it's not something that panned out. One sentence. Why did that never happen? And it's ironic to me also that a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon of blaming AWP about Nick. And I'm thinking, no, Nick really fell right into line with L law enforcement's advice of go over to what was the other place called? Tutton Lake. I can't remember. It wasn't um, Boca or go to Boca and law enforcement was, didn't say go to Boca, but check the other lakes out and don't go to Prosser. I don't believe that you can blame and, and AWP. And I do believe their word. They spoke with the, the law enforcement. They weren't told. And, and how long does it really take law enforcement to subpoena AAA or whatever? Believe me, it doesn't take that long because I, we were subpoenaed all the time where I worked because of the community I worked for, where we had so much stuff with children and very sad detectives would come in and, they got their, they got what they needed from us. Marlena, thank you. I just, the, that, the, uh, oh, I'm just texting that because that doesn't come through on StreamYards, but thank you. Two months member and thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Um, no, I agree. So Lucy sent me this article. Could, do you mind maybe, exp maybe looking at it? That's just part of this article that she sent about the lung weights. Can I show you a part of it? You may, but somebody asked me, is it the doctor's opinion? that she didn't drown. It is my opinion. Of course it is. Yeah. What is that? There is not enough evidence informed evidence based documentation of a drowning. I believe it's undetermined. That's my impression. That's my conclusion. I mean, everybody has a right to make their own conclusion. What did you want to look at the, the loan? Well, can this be, uh, but there'd probably be something else that showed that, right? Um, That's 970. So it's showing that the left lung is, uh, wait, wait, is it? I don't know. That's what I was figuring. Let me, let me make sure. Yeah, it's showing the left lung is bigger. And it's uh, a thing with, hold on. Hold on. Okay. I think it said embolic. Hold on. Ooh. Oops. Pulmonary fat embolism. So let's see. Bone embolism. 
Well, that's different. So Lucy just sent this to me. Oh, it's a non thrombo like right here, pulmonary. Non -thrombotic pulmonary is a Other things would show up if it was that, right? Oh, yeah. as as and, and, but interesting, thank you, Saluthi, because if if you can look at those lungs, it's not the same finding with, with uh, that same photographic finding um, and, or slight, uh, what we call gross finding with um, the drowning, but the lungs of somebody who's drowned have, that's a whole other, I mean, there are other stigmata, so we call them stigmata or little, uh, that's what we use in medicine, meaning important aspects or, of physical findings. Um, and one of the stigmata of drowning is something called the uh, Paul Toffs. I think it's P-A-U-L-T-O-F-F, comma, apostrophe. Paul Toffs spots. And they are um, a result of having been submerged and the <sighs> surface area of the lung basically gets these particular spots. I, I It's a little bit Beyond, I won't say my pay grade, but I'm not even being paid for that, yeah, obviously. But I mean, I'd have to look more clearly into this, but it's particular sort of hemorrhagic spotting on the boggy lung that are called Paul Toff's spots. Maybe you could look that up for me so I could, we can clarify that. Okay. Uh, that was not found either on her lungs. There was no comment of that. Um. So yeah, and this also said endometri and congested lungs, oh, and multiple edematous, areas of edematous lungs. swollen and congested lungs with multiple areas of parenchymal contusion. The contusions are those sort of hemorrhagic or blood, sort of almost like bruising areas that you see, the darker areas. And so, I mean, but drowning, is it? I just kind of want to, like, why is her left? You don't think it's a big deal that it, on every most cases it's not? Ah, it shouldn't be. No, you that's there's something else going on that could help us figure this out. I don't about think the <clears throat> no, okay. I think let's let's step back because you're looking at the you're looking like at the grass or the trees or something. We gotta see this. Hold on. All right, what did you want me to look up? Shoot, I forget what you said now. Um. Uh, power. The, I think ten grams difference is not the issue here. She was a hundred grams and then hundred and ten. And it should be maybe reversed. That's not what that um, stands out to me. What stands out to me, Zav, is the lungs are just normal size, and yet you've been submerged and you maybe drowned. And the average drowning victim would have at least eight hundred gram combined lung up to seventeen hundred grams. That's well, I know what that's a big deal, but I'm just saying it. There's little clues. Shouldn't we take all the clues? I mean, I know that's weird. We that's crazy. The what? No water in the lungs. The light lungs. That's probably the biggest issue. But then also, is there any clues into the whole lung difference? That's all I'm saying. It's maybe. so minuscule. We only have a little bit of information. Like you no, know, I know. You're right. They give you a number, and you're like, I gotta grab onto the number. But but 100 to 110 grams is a minuscule difference, in my opinion. You know what, Vanessa, I totally agree with. I don't want to happen to Vanessa's comment. Vanessa A said the good goal oh shoot of American education the good oh, I can't read it. Good old American education is evident in a lot of these comments. And is she going like this? Like, is that supposed to be sarcastic? Because I I would disagree. I think our educational system is extremely weak we know that it's probably 65th in the world or something. It's not a good educational system, but. Wait, I have to clear this up. Verna, she is a doctor though. So why is she up here speaking on it? What is on it? Because she is a doctor though. That's why she's up here speaking on it as a dog. Wait, oh, I think that's in reference to what you said, but. Uh, what? I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe she could clear this up. Yeah, it's terrifying. But I think I what I've been really what I've remarked, if I'm remarkable, is i I am very encouraged by all the outstanding questions and the deep thinking and the critical thinking of um I've got a, I got a, 
Hold on. Thank you. No, I know that's Lucy. I'm still going to try to look because that's just, you know, you're like me. We have to, every little detail, we don't have many, but we, we're going to, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm with you. I want to look more into little things. Um, um, okay, so Verna, I'm trying to figure out, Verna, what you're, what's going on with you. I'm not a doctor on a panel using my training as a way to. I'm not trying wow. to. That's that's awfully that's awfully forward of you to say that. Let's just like, move on. Like, can you no, answer this I, question? I, no, I no, you don't want to. Okay. That, that Verna, I think I've been following Verna and all of her driving and and all of her um, sort of driving hither thither and yon within the park. I could easily say that your driving has been a way to influence people, to convince people this is how she drowned or this is how she got into an accident. And I, I, I think what's more important is rather than to disparage me is to say, wow, we've got different people with, from different backgrounds, different professions, levels of education, and we're all trying to have civil dialogue and discourse. That's what I want to answer you. And I, by the way, Verna, have very much appreciated, um, even though I might not agree with you, I've very much appreciated that you've gone out in the obscurity and la oscuridad de la noche, in the obscurity of night. And you've, and you've, you know, with great, you know, courage, because I certainly wouldn't go out and drive by myself or with my mom or whatever. And I've appreciated what you've done. And it's added to my understanding geographically of the area there. So I thank you. Yeah, she's helped me see a lot of the area, definitely. Um, yeah. So have you ever treated a patient with dry drowning? No, it's so incredibly rare. It is incredibly rare. So I would say no to that. Nope. That's just interesting because I wanted to, I never even asked you that about the Summer Wells case. I should have. Well, um, okay. So the next uh, do you want, what about the one question here? Hold on. I don't know if you want to answer this now, but hold on. Let me get it. The, um, are there other kinds of autopsy that can be done for a potential drowning victim other than the normal physical well, autopsy? You, or? you talked about the virtual autopsy. Oh, which, I missed that. Yeah. Okay. They can look for fluid in the sphenoid sinus, et cetera. Right. Can I, um, bring up another comparison with the Watts that I wanted to ask you? You may. I don't know if I, I'm not really sure I will be able to answer it. Well, okay. Hold on one second. Let me get to the part that I want. Um, I have all the pages listed for this one. Okay. So I wanted to go to 882. Hold on one second. So, you know, one thing I was going to mention, well, I think I'll, I'll wait for my own uh, video on my channel just to mention. Okay. So, when we, hold on, let me get one more thing. Hold on. Okay. Getting the page numbers in and then I'll share my screen. Okay. So with the um, toxicology part, right now I know with um, Kylie's, they took the spleen or the, sorry, liver tissue, but with Shanann's here, one of the, um, they took um, the spleen blood, but I was just curious why the reporting limit is so much lower for her things than it is for Kylie's. Is it because the difference between spleen blood and tissue? Well, also, well, I, uh, you're, you're, you're going so fast. I can't. I know I'm just cause I'm finding the spot here. Okay. okay. First of all, let's just talk about the, the ideal place is the vitreous humor, which is the jelly portion of the eyes. Another uh, excellent place is if somebody's had a head trauma and they have a, what we call subdural hematoma, which is a, a walled off, collection of blood that's an excellent place those are like the two best places to collect pristine um liquid can you because explain real quick while we're talking about that why didn't they take from the vitreous humor on kylie's you explained it a little bit on my the one live but people were asking me since can yeah you well let me just finish why it, before i say why they didn't okay i want to say that in general those are two outstanding places and the reason being is that a subdural hematoma is walled off by uh, sort of like a sack of hardened uh, uh, blood material. And it, within that is blood that has not been subjected to the metabolism. So that blood, so let's say somebody 
has been drinking. We're going to just use alcohol as an example. And they hit their head in an accident. And then they, they have a subdural hematoma and they ultimately end up in the hospital. They don't die from this. Meanwhile, three hours, four hours, six hours go by and you're still alive and you're still pumping and you're urinating and all of that. Your alcohol le- going through your liver, et cetera, it's going to go down that alcohol level. And we have mathematical formulas that we can extrapolate back to the time of the accident. We can take an alive person and say, well, right now, six hours after the accident, their alcohol, blood alcohol level was this. What was it when they were driving? And we have, we have um, mathemat- we have calculations to do that, to show that they were indeed t- intoxicated or even more and how more. But with the walled off subdural hematoma and in the vitreous, that isn't subject to all those metabolic things happening. So that walled off thing is going to give you from like within moments or an hour of the accident, exactly what the blood level was of whatever tox you're looking for as the vitreous humor is, is the same way. But in this case, for two reasons, they did not, from what I understand, they did not go for the vitreous humor. If you look at the autopsy of Ky- uh, yeah, of Kylie, you will see that there was decomposition. And there, do you remember that it said that the, the fa- there's poor facial recognition? Then they actually looked at the eyes and said that there was some, there was on the conjunctiva, there was some redness, but there was some blanching. And if you go back there, as I recall, the vitreous, and it's very common um, in water submersions, prolonged, because of the osmosis and the, and the movement of salts, etc., off and predators, fish, etc., the eyes are often not pristine. They're maybe not even there anymore. I'll well, find it in a minute because instead of scrolling, I just find things on my own and then put it up because I feel like it drives more people crazy when I'm scrolling while it's up on the screen. Um, but let me get back to don't I want to add? Well, I'm not saying you for sure could answer that, but I am going to look into that because that's I don't understand why the reporting limits are lower. So you don't think it has to do with one being spleen blood and one being a tissue that the reporting limits would be different? Because they're like, one is 80, one is 10. That's how different they are. Why? Why would it be so much lower for Shanann's? Or for, uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, she must be froze. Am I froze? I'm trying to find the eyes we could go over. Oh, she just got off. Hold on a second. Let me find the eyes. So she, when she comes back, we'll have them. Because she was just saying how the eyes, um, that's why they probably didn't take the vitreous humor because there was damage to the eyes. I don't know. Can you guys still hear me? I'm not sure, but hold on. I'll get to you in one minute. I'm just trying to find this so I'll have it ready. Uh, there's the nose. Email. Scars, external. Better hold on, guys, one second. And I'm just, also, we have to wait for her to come back, so I'm hoping she pops right back. As I'm looking, I don't know what happened. She might have lost internet. Sometimes internet's not perfect. <laughs> I've lost it many a times. Um. Well, I could show you the the reporting limits while we're waiting, but I'm just trying to find the eye information on Kylie, so I have it ready. Why? What would that be under? I guess it's under external. I don't know why I was thinking it was going to be under the other part, but it, it's not. So it's got to be under the external. Um, and it doesn't let me search the way it should when I was searching for terms. You guys saw it. It was like nothing came up when there was obviously that word was in the um, 
the document. So I don't know why it's not working for some reason uh, by searching it for a term. It really isn't. Here's the eyes. Here we go. I found the eyes. You came back at perfect time. I just found the eyes. I think it was my dog stepped on the computer plug. Ah, I figured. Because I didn't hear, like, it was all quiet. And I look and I'm like, I, I thought you were just staring at me. I'm like, wait, you <laughs> Um. All right. Where's the eyes? I just had them. Oh, here we go. The eyes. Okay. So we're good right here. Do you, got, do you see it here? Let me make it a little bit bigger. Because we were talking about the eyes you wanted to see, right? Are you froze again? No, no, oh, I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm just looking at. So, right here. I have to do so. Do you have any mods tonight? Yeah, yeah. Why, what do you need? Hold on one sec. Oh, God. Okay. Don't don't focus on the chat, maybe because I it could be very sidetracking. I know if they're being mean, is something going on? Well, I think I'm just. Well, you, it doesn't seem as if you have um any mods, and Vernus really seems to be quite riled up. Well, no, that we do on Streamyard. You can't see the blue. You don't see the wrenches. I don't oh. see them either. They don't show up on the. So I yeah, see. there's mods in there. I see a like three or four already. So you. But I mean, I don't want, I mean, what do you want? Why? What do you think? Should no, be I just, that's fine. I just see that there, there seem that her comments are apparently ca causing divisiveness amongst folks in chat. And that's really a shame. Okay. Let us proceed. Yeah. Okay, so the eyes. Let's get to the... Okay. Okay, so if you look at the eyes are discolored yeah. from decomposition, although there's definition between the corneas and the conjunctiva, find the anterior, cha the anterior chambers discolored. The conjunctiva are pale maroon to pale green. The soft tissues are no, they really don't talk about and it, whether the vitreous is still there or not. So we don't know. So why wouldn't they have taken it then? Are you guessing that maybe I'm that's what saying, it is? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. These are these are you know, I don't have the answers. These are just things that I'm wondering about. So okay, so let me just go back to this real quick. I just sure. wanna, I know you I I already asked you this, but no, 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 no. I no, want to no. show you though, real quick though. Okay, oh. so they took liver tissue here, but on Shenan's they took um, spleen Lean. blood, right? But look yeah. at the reporting limit for ethanol is ten, but the reporting Wait, limit for this is eighty. You There's hear? one that's eighty, and hold on, let me go down. I know I'm going fast, but I want to get to the spot here, right here. Okay. <laughs> the one ethanol is 80 and then the, there's another one that's 40 but both a shenan say reporting limit 10 and then i looked at some of the other drugs reporting limit compared right. to the labs and they were all lower but is that because the spleen compared to the liver tissue well i mean uh, i think that the spleen is not is probably fifth in line for um accuracy and so i'm sure they do have different reporting limits okay. but what i find it i think that they have two different levels um if you go back to kylie's um because i think they did two different methods like they did uh liquid yeah. chromatography and they may have done an eliza or something as yeah, i recall that's exactly yeah the one's eliza and the other is uh hold on eliza's um far more accurate Okay, so the ELISA is the one that's the 40, but for the ELISA, it was just that one, the ethanol, wait, where is that? It's down here. Is No, that one's the uh, reporting limit yes. 80. And that's the one where they put 88. The other one, they just said confirmed for the 40. But, mm -hmm. um, hold on one second. Did you guys notice? Okay, remember, Kylie's, uh, hold on, where is it at? Ooh, I got like a bunch of stuff. So Kylie's, Kylie's was 88 for ethanol. And they also did a, um, for Shenan's, they did a blood alcohol concentration. But for 88, okay, so hers is 0.128. The legal limit is 0.08, right? Well, for Kylie's, 
hers, the reporting limit is 0 0.08 because that's how it transfers. 80 is 0 0.08. Well, hers was 0 0.088. Hers was just above the legal limit. And we know Shanann's was 0 0.128. And we still, 128, 88. I mean, we still say, like, professionals will still say Shanann didn't even have anything to drink. Right. That's right. It was just all decomposition. Correct. So you guys That's see how Kylie was not intoxicated right. like you're saying. That is it's correct. Crazy. That was from decomposition. Yeah. Why are they lying? Why is multiple well, people? Jane too. Jane Doe's too. Oh, she's oh, so oh, she's oh, drunk. Are they, see, well, see, okay, guys. Drunk. Okay. Can't even drive yeah. home. There's no way she'd be able to make it home. Like, why are they why are they lying? That's what's well, really suspicious to me. Okay, and I that we can speak to that because uh, that speaks to the investigative blah, blah, invest. Let me try that again. Invest, investigate, investigative. Sorry, investigative portion of the case. In other words, you have you have the medical examiner who is a in this case a well. They should always be an MD, right? Medical examiner, this is a forensic pathologist that performed the autopsy, right? Then you had the coroner or the deputy coroner, and a coroner is not an MD. The In general, the coroner, it's a throwback from the, literally the 18, early 1800s in the United Kingdom, where they had a coroner who was responsible for the, the crime scene and basically was essentially a scribe. They were the person that would document like the patient was picked up. The da, 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 da. And in this day and age, what the coroner does ultimately is that coroner is responsible for collating the three pieces of the case investigation. One is the autopsy. Two is the police investigation of the teens, the parents, the, the whomever, all that, right? And third is the crime scene investigation, all right? I just wanted to show some things on, sorry, I just wanted to show a couple things because there's, uh, it's, people are quoting a little bit of misinformation about the, like how you take the 0.88 as 0 0.08, like, I don't know. I just wanted to clear some. No, but up. the point is, that the level that they found in Kylie is can be ascribed the majority of it to decomposition. Yeah, that's based yeah. on what they document. They say all. They, it says either some or all can be. Right. So, and that's not even that high. Point right. eight eight. So yeah, it's crazy. Right. And then I got this chart where it shows body weight and how many drinks. Okay, I know it's good. just an estimation. That's all right. Go ahead. But for her, she weighed what one hundred and three, right? So it would right. be one hundred. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if to get to point zero eight, which would be uh, or let's say point eight eight, because she tested a point eight eight, it would be two if there were no drinks. decomposition. If there had been no decomposition. Yes, if there was no decomposition, it would only be two to three drinks. But Correct, yeah. a lot of that, a lot of that, they even word it like all oh, could be because of that. And we know Shanann's were thinking all of that because there was no, everybody said she was not drinking that night. And so look, hold on, I just want to show it again because I think it's really important uh, because to figure out what the heck happened. So yeah, hers was so much even higher than Kylie's. 128. Kylie's was 88. Shanann didn't have anything to drink. It was all decomposition. Well, but you all, you, you also can't really compare, remember, because you have two different locales. You've got... Well, that's what I was asking, so it is. Cold a water oh, okay. decomposition. Cool water decomposition over two weeks versus Shanann dry air Colorado 100 and something degree temperature in the sun. But only two days, or how many days? It wasn't yeah, that many days, days. though. So yeah, that, that decomposition. I think it all balances out, right? Yeah, kind of. pretty, yes, but you, you can't, there's no mathematics. Like, pretty, you know, yes, Marlena, I've been meaning to answer this. In my, I don't know if Marlena saw my second oh, video. Okay. Did you see it? I don't know, from my channel from yesterday, but I go through all of those specifics. 
And there are only three ways to positively, legally positively identify somebody post-mortem. The standard benchmark since the early 1900s is, is fingerprinting. Obviously not everybody has fingerprints on record. Number two are dental records. In comparison, dental records from your dental office visits to post-mortem. Number three is mitochondrial DNA. Take DNA from, you can even get it from the dentum of your teeth underneath the enamel. You can get it from bone marrow. There are many places you can get mitochondrial DNA. And you compare that DNA, that post-mortem DNA, to pre-mortem or before death DNA if somebody has a toothbrush, because when we brush our teeth, we slough off epithelial cells where you can get mitochondrial DNA. So a toothbrush or a hairbrush, but if you've shared the toothbrush and the hairbrush, that's going to make it a little less, less accurate because whose hair are you testing? Whose epithelial gum cells are you testing? Okay, but the three ways, Marlena, are the benchmark of fingerprints, number two, dental records and doing that comparison, number three, mitochondrial DNA comparing bone marrow, whatever, in, in the uh, deceased to something like a toothbrush or a hairbrush of the person pre-deceased. So those would be three and really the only three ways to positively identify somebody. There are about eight ways that one can presumptively identify, okay, a deceased. But presumptively, presuming, I assume, I presume, is not considered the benchmark. It's not considered the way to do it. It's just a presumptive. We think it is. One of way is for a family member to come down. And if they're willing and the person isn't so decomposed facially, which in this case she was, according to the autopsy, or according to the coroner that then told them, you know, and if the family had been willing, which I don't really think I would be, you could try to say, this is my loved one, this is my child. But the thing is, we know that that's a very, not a very accurate way because we know in not, not too distant past in New York City, for example, there were family, there were tourists and from Italy that were in a helicopter crash. I'm getting into the whole thing. And two children died and apparently some did, some didn't. I, I don't remember these specifics, but the parents were brought in to identify is this your child? And they thought it was, and it wasn't. So you can't count on physical. You understand what I'm saying? You look confused, Zev. Oh, sorry. I was looking through this results. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. So you can't count on, that's a presumptive diagnosis. Another marker or another way to do presumptive diagnosis would be tattoos. The person has five unusual tattoos. Well, that could be. But then what if somebody else has those five? You can't really go, oh, yeah. Somebody else in the chat said, well, they found another marker. It would be surgical scars or surgical screws or surgical plates, which, which she did have in, I think, her left arm. And somebody said, oh, that, that's, a, that's a positive diagnosis. No, because there could be other people that have that. You can, it is not considered legally a positive diagnosis. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Oh, you thanks for coming by. Come up and say hello. Thank you. Gosh, can you get them up? No, you can't get them up. Okay. And um, and then there are other things like jewelry. And they did spend an enormous amount of time with the jewelry, and um, but other people can have jewelry and they can have tattoos and they can have extreme piercings or whatever. Um, another way would be, and this is a way that I think. It's, but it's only presumptive, Marlena, would be Kylie is missing. Her car is missing. We find that Kylie's car, we know it by her VIN number, it is her car. There's one body in there, and it looks like she's wearing the same clothes. She's wearing, got the piercing. She's got all these different markers. You can go, wow, that is the person. But you cannot positively identify them from a medical legal perspective, based on, even if they have all those things, 
you, you really have to go back to DNA, dental testing, or fingerprinting. So that's where I'm at a loss, Marlena, because I don't know. Did It looks like in the, the end of the report, it said something about DNA. But as Sarah Claire Claire says, uh, yes, shoddy. It was a shoddy, in my opinion. I, 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 you know, and the descriptions of the jewelry. I mean, the fact that they described all of that, but they didn't get into any of the uh, any of the stigmata of drowning, physical stigmata. I'm thinking, well, and the, but then you come to drowning. We'll spend more time with some of the physical findings, please, so that we can, you know, be convinced. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't really have any more questions. I feel like I'm just asking quite stupid questions, I guess. No, there's um, no, put yourself down. There are no such things as stupid questions. Um, there was one thing I was thinking about though. There was, oh, I would like you please to go to the last page of the autopsy, I believe, where it says like cause of death. And then it under, uh, let me see if I can find it on mine. Okay, hold on. Here we go. All right. Which part? Like before that? Well, like I can read this. It's it's um actually it's the narrative signed by the coroner, which P.S. What page? Coroner, so I, can... coroner I believe. What page? Well, I, I, narrative. I just... Okay, I'll find it. Hold on. Nevada County Sheriff's Office, and, and I didn't say thought... a page on the bottom. Yeah. It doesn't. Page one of one. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it. Wait, wait. Oh, it's up. It's one of these up here. Okay. Hold on. Um, narrative. Okay. Oh, where is it? All right. Hmm. Narrative. Wait, hold on. Where does it say narrative? Right here. Yeah. Okay. Which one? Do you, where do you want to start reading? Hold on. Bear with me. Let me see. Incident report. I'm just looking. Continue down. Go down further, please. Yeah. The medical information is is missing. The is the person on any medications um, missing? They said no uh, observed tattoos, and then but the this, tat yeah. But this is from eight twenty one, so I'm guessing they didn't know all that yet. You nope. know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what yes, it's just really on. It. I understand that, they, but, but they clear it up at the end. They clear it up in other forms, though. Yes, but I think they said where they said the tattoo was of seventeen was not in, in her, the locale hip. that it's was. It's on her, it's on her, I it was on her breast. Said We're hip on her. down yeah. on here. It says yeah, hip. Yeah. They I, said I, ribs. I, no, dude. They on before this came out. It kept saying ribs. Right. So which is it? Probably her hip. I'm sure this is the final, right? I don't. I, I don't know. know, guys, because you've had for weeks on a missing poster or whatever's been promulgated in the in the in the uh, let's try media that the. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the I believe it was a left rib area. It was the 17. Yeah, it's on the ribs. That's what I was saying. It's on her ribs. But they did say wrist. Maybe they just... Uh, uh, no, they said hip. Huh? I thought on the autopsy they said hip. Hip, yeah. So I'm saying no before that, when on the form, on like the flyers, it would say ribs. Correct, correct. But no, I'm saying I think I I think this is probably more accurate. It's probably on her hip. But who even said ribs? I wonder. Why did they even say ribs at the beginning? Like they I, that's what they said before. Well, you got out. Emily Clouds and somebody else saying that Jagger said that it was on her ribs. I mean, maybe you know, Jagger just... miss. Maybe he just like considered that ribs when it's like maybe on her upper hip, and he just. He miss, he's like, oh, that's your ribs or something. You know what I'm saying? Think about well, it. I don't know. I'm I don't know. Sense out of I don't it. know. This is what I'm talking about. You know, I'm trying hard to have a measure of confidence. 
But when you have so many discrepancies, it makes it difficult to have confidence in a result. But we still didn't go back to what I'm asking you to go back to, I which know, I was, just, oh, that's all right. Okay. I just, I wanted to show, I thought you wanted me to look at the, the, the tattoo the first. Hold on. Oh, oh I'm, I am all over the place. I'm sorry. Okay. So yeah, it's the hip. Right. Hip. But I should find the other form you, when she was missing when they said yes. Rest. Can you do that? I was so confused because here's why I was confused. There's a picture and it doesn't say who it is, but it's assumed that it's Kylie's hand because it's like in the groups and it has her hand and there's a 17. It looks like a tattoo on her like off the hand. So I always thought when it said ribs, I'm like they misquoted, they mistyped it, they meant to put wrist. But here, I guess she didn't have that. Maybe that's maybe that was just uh, like a pen drawing on her wrist that said 17 or on her. So then when this comes out and it says hip, I'm like, wait, what? But yeah, so I'll find it. But yeah, so it says uh, 17 on her, her her right hip. And then she has a scar on her left wrist. Okay, let me try to find that while you go on to whatever you were going to talk about next. What were you going to talk about? No, somebody's saying it's funny the whole time they never mentioned the scar. I actually had read that she'd had surgery there's on a picture of her with her yeah. there was a star and I did see that. Yeah. I'm just curious. I'll try to find that. Um Zav, I'm proud of you or something. Hmm? Okay, oceans, I totally agree with you. To me as a na as an as a physician, but not a forensic pathologist. So I'm just a as we they sometimes say, a dumb family doctor. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a joke. Said that? Well, oh, this is training. Oh. I mean, it was like the dermatologists and the, you know, neurologists and the internal medicine would be like, we, we passed, our teams would pass each other and it was a joke. Oh, there go the dumb family doctors because, you know, they considered, oh, you just, you know, everything generally, but you don't know specifically and whatever. And that's fine. I, I love being a family practitioner. I, I think it's, quite uh intellectual for me and i love treating my patients and being with them so yeah um but Can i what show was you that? something yeah. real quick okay this has a bunch this has a part of both of it right here that i was talking about right here so you could see a part of it where it says 17 on her ribs that's what it says and then it yep. shows this so i'm like they mistyped it they meant to put wrist even though that technically isn't her wrist but, but maybe that was not say a 17 with a little heart what's it does about? because my kids have multiple sharpie tattoos like that but underneath they have this information Ooh, that's why i that. thought it's a post i think it's under one. Oh uh, well you no know, let's look i'd be curious can we find the yeah. official thing oh okay well that's good jackie made a very good point there i, I wish you could get back to what jackie just said She's like, no, you're not an expert. No, I'm not. No, he didn't say that I was. Um, don't have structure like this report. Not personally driving chaotic and erratic. Don't expect to. Oh. Jackie said something very good. Now, Jackie, I didn't know that. And I thank you so very much for sharing that. She said that if somebody has implants and they have a unique implant ID, well, that may well be. I personally. Hey, Michelle um, and Squirrel, do you, do you, did you see that. this? What about the squirrel, levity squirrel. on the right side of her head? Does that make sense with drowning? Thank you, Squirrel. Well, it's oh, hard to Jackie. Know. We'll, wait, oh, wait, we'll yeah. that up. Sorry. Wait, uh, this is how it goes. We just, I have to move fast. It's just. Sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know, but then, because we have to get through. No, no the questions i'm sorry but so do you know anything about that first one i you know with squirrel girl yeah i am very uh not a very good spatially i'd have to go back think of where the car was upside down i i'd really have to go back and figure out was she leaning you know was she leaning against something and that is the reason that she had the lividity because usually lividity has to lividity has to do with pooling of the blood per your gravitational position right so i don't know and p.s um you know we don't even know if she was tethered in and when we when i worked in the emergency room 
you know, when I, even in my office, when somebody comes in after a motor vehicle accident, there's a certain um, standard way of, of presenting a patient. You might say something like the patient is a 50 year old black female who was a restrained or unrestrained, meaning you had the seatbelt or didn't driver involved in a low speed two car accident. She had no loss of con consciousness. I'm making this up right now. And there were no airbag, there was no airbag deployment. All of that should be like within the first two sentences. So it's very important to know, was the person restrained or not? And in this case, it's important to know, was she tethered in or not tethered in with that thing that was hanging out of the tailgate? Because that would have prevented her from maybe floating up and that might have allowed her to lean against something causing the levity. We don't know because the, from what I can glean, the tailgate was opened even before the, the deputy coroner saw her, right? Open. I mean, that thing was just sticking out. Did you want to answer Jackie's though? Jackie, thank you. I disagree. Wait, I didn't say I was an expert. We agree, Jackie. I'm not an expert. I'm a dumb family doctor, as I said. That's the joke. I'm not a forensic pathologist, but I am a physician. Um, or, but so no, I'm not an expert in this particular sub specialty of the sub 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 specialty. You can positively identify from implants because each implant in the United States has a unique number. Breast implants, etc. Okay. Good. I did not know that each implant, and, and that's partly because I've only worked with the undocumented and immigrant Spanish-speaking population for the most part in my 30 years. And usually they will go back to Latin America or South America for their implants and their um, breast implants and their teeth because it's about 500% less expensive than in the United States. So, and they don't have unique numbers, but thank you for letting me know. That's interesting. I'm going to look into that, Jackie, because in the scholarly articles, and a lot of them are recent, there is no mention of that um, unique number being medical legally allowed for positive ID. So I'm going to ask Jackie, do you have an article, like a scholarly article or something you could link so that I could look at that? That would be so helpful. Here we go. Look, I looked it up. I mean, we could probably find it like more in depth. This is just a basic result, but I'll look more into it. Artificial surgical implants recover from skeletal remains. It usually contain information that helps in the identification no. process where the prior knowledge about the remains lacks. The serial and lot numbers on the implanted devices can identify the manufacturers, distributors, or hospitals. So I want to look more into it to see. Like, the more into it. I, I don't think it's a positive identifier, but I could be absolutely be wrong. I think that's a great. Yeah, look there. Here's the article. It's National Library of oh, Medicine. Good, good, good. Maybe you can send me that okay. for later. I'll take our time right now. Well, is there anything else you want to go over? We should try to keep this around well, two I, hours because you got your advice. To I know. Me. I wanted you to go to the last page of the narrative because okay. and I can just read it for now. And I will say okay. that um, I have recently reviewed, this is the coroner. Is this the coroner that wrote this? Interesting. Hmm. I have recently, who's not a physician, he is a, really an administrator and I don't know if in this case is the coroner also the the sheriff or not. Do, do, what, what, there was an issue around that. But anyway, I have recently reviewed the pathologist's final report of autopsy, which listed it as drowning. There are no other significant contributing conditions listed. I conferred with Detective Sonye, and he told me that there was no indication of foul play regarding the criminal investigation into the death of Kylie. The manner of death, therefore, is determined as accidental. You know, to have a one-liner, a one-liner saying somebody, Detective Sonye told me there's no indication of foul play. What is that based on? We know, you know, uh, closed. K 
Case disposition closed. Accident. If I were the parent and or if I were the reviewing physician like I'm doing right now for a case not related to, the, to YouTube, you know, I, we, we're going to have to go back to law enforcement and reopen this particular case because it, the, the, yeah, the autopsy and the investigative findings were not uh, clearly documented. And so the three pieces are the crime scene investigation, which I discussed. I didn't find it to be in terms of chain of custody, um, you know, pristine. And there are, are multiple areas within this particular, from what we have been given that have not been evaluated to therefore deem I mean, there are areas that should have been looked at, may have been looked at, but not documented, to point to drowning, and it wasn't done. Ergo, how can they make a case of drowning? It should be indeterminate. And then a one-liner that this person spoke with Detective Donier, and he said, it's, it's hearsay. And based on that hearsay, the coroner or who who wrote this closed accent? Do we know? Or is that the pathologist? Or I'm just, I don't know. Do you know? Oh, wait, who wrote what? Say that again. Right there. Who wrote that narrative right there? Um, hold on. Let's that see. last page. Who wrote that? Well, let's see. Was that the, was that I the. Sign? Oh, no, that didn't, they didn't sign that part. Hold on. Yeah. One of one. Um, hold on. Reporting officer, wouldn't it be reported what? by Jason Clinkenbeard, right? That's what it says. I don't know, but yeah, um, that's what it says. I mean, we got to tr trust the report, right? Isn't that what it says? Is that, that's how you would reporting officer. And, and you know, says, what I heard from, for instance, from um, when AWP was being interviewed by Chris McDonough recently on Chris McDonough's channel. Chris said, according to Chris, that they take everything, they take the three pieces, crime scene investigation, the autopsy, and the um, investigations, interviewing of people of interest, et cetera, looking back at everything, whatever the case is. They take all three of those and they meet law enforcement and everybody meets, you know, and they have a powwow, so to speak, and they review and they distill and they muddle over it and then they come up with a decision i don't really see that i don't where's the meeting what, what you guys can we just like let's just everybody's still like going at verna like can we just like oh, move it. on it's not <laughs> you know what I'm I, don't, saying? We don't even, I don't even know if this is the real verna because the verna that i've seen has been helpful and charming and and, and I've enjoyed looking at her video and she's a local. And again, maybe Verna, I don't know if she was here at the beginning of, of what of this now two hours, what I said, which I, my caveat at the beginning of this whole thing, my, my sort of disclaimer, so to speak, is that my, I don't believe, I mean, other people may believe that, you know, we should be here berating and disparaging and, and offending people. But uh, my goal is not. Mine is to shed light on the one area of expertise that I do have within medicine and to, to have civil discourse and dialogue. I don't believe things are binary in life. The police are all good. The police are all bad. Parents are wonderful. Parents are terrible. This is just not the way life is. And if you back, I back the blue. Oh, I back the blue, so I can't say something that I'm concerned about. No, that's that's not how, in my opinion, mature, integrated personalities and people behave. So for me, I definitely back the blue. But I also can criticize them. And it doesn't mean that I don't back the blue. I back medical people. Does it mean that every autopsy is perfect? No. I'm an American. 
Do I hate aspects of America, of politics and blah, 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 blah? Yes, but I'm still an American. So, you know, I think when we get into these, it's all good or all bad, all right or all wrong, you know, it's dangerous. And I guess the other thing that I want to say is I, I do believe in truth. I mean, that is so very important. And I don't believe in secrets and silence, mostly because I've unfortunately over my 30 years had hundreds, especially of children who've been told, you know, to be silent about their abuse, about their SA, about this, and that is not the way to go about it. So I have always <clears throat> believed that we need to tell truth, even if it's difficult to face. So in this instance, I think all of us have really been wanting to go towards what is the truth. But we also know in life that there is no fairness and no justice, ultimately. There really isn't. And... Um, let me just, Jenny. Everybody's welcome in my chat. I hear both sides. That would be that would be pretty uh, wrong of me to be like, oh, she thinks a different opinion, so she's not allowed in my chat. This is Everybody's what I'm allowed about. in my chat. This is exactly this is open. I get accused of like, of uh, what was the word they used? Um, not looking at both sides, basically. You have to. What you want me to do is blo block a side. I'm looking at both sides. I'm not gonna just block somebody because they have a different opinion. I'm sorry, that's not right. So no, yeah, and I think you've got a lot of that everybody is right? freaking welcome with their opinion. Yes, okay? it's important. Where, we don't have to that's agree. What, that's what happened to me because I had one different opinion when the fire came cam came out, and now because of the autopsy, I'm starting to think something else. Because as I learn new things, my mind can change. But at the time, I had a different opinion than some of you guys, and I'm getting trashed and called um uh, I'm paid off. I was getting accused of that. So no, like, you're allowed to have different no. opinions. So like, nobody deserves to be blocked. And I know maybe sometimes, you know, maybe she could have said something a little bit nicer. I mean, maybe she shouldn't have been as rude, but people are rude. I don't block people for being rude or half of you guys would be blocked. You know what I'm saying? No. I'm very open. And then I get accused of, your mods are too strict. You block everybody, but now you want me to block the people you want me to block, right? People want me to block, but if I block anybody else like oh you're you're too strict you're 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 trying to control the narrative no i'm it's open to everybody i don't care I think it is, and i think that that's what i'm talking about that we can't be like this person's awful this for you know i yeah. have some of my favorite channels are are some creators that are incredibly rude to people use foul language i mean if i decided i only will deal with people that are exactly my speech level, my education level, my ethnicity, my this, my that, my religion, I don't think I would have any friends on YouTube and other people wouldn't be my friend either. So, um, oh boy. Let's, let's let make this the last question because I don't want it to go too long because you know how it is too long. We want people to watch this and then when it becomes too long, nobody rewatches when they're too long. So we no, were, this is very important. So. The last question, there are two last questions. Somebody said that I was complaining about Verna earlier. I'm not complaining that Verna has a different opinion. What I'm complaining at is the lack of civility and courtesy in her approach to, to talking with me. No, she's rude. I already said that guy was rude, but rude, I don't it's block rude. rude that doesn't mean we block somebody. Yeah, we don't block people because well, they're rude. Now, if it's like... Yeah. There's a difference between like nasty people that won't quit being nasty. I think now people are just constantly on her, but she made one rude comment. I get that. But okay. I don't block people for one rude comment. A lot of no. people make rude comments. Here's the thing, guys. Mad if I blocked you for that. All right. So listen, I have enjoyed myself. I can't, Kenny, Kenny Knackers, I can't. And I'll tell you why. This, there are so many, it's multifactorial. It's there are so many factors. And I, that would be another conversation. And I think we would need to really ask if anybody in the community is a toxicologist. And there are a couple people actually in my comment that said that they were a toxicologist and they've done this. So I'm going to go back and figure out and maybe we'll see if we can get somebody to come up and answer that question. Yeah. So I'm going to write that down because I do agree with you. I just can't, I can't, I don't want to, misrepresent what I can answer.
Okay. Um, and look, she was timed out. So she was punished for that. And that's so, I sound like it's so, so silly, but they did, they did. So everything was taken care of, but not blocked. Block is when you're blocked from the channel. Not, no, I don't like blocking people. So as much as you guys say that we block, I don't block. I'm very strict on that. I want everybody's opinions welcome. And I agree, Candy. How many times I've thought somebody was meaning something and I just addressed it and they, I totally misunderstood it. So, right. Yeah, you, no, can't, right. you can't get the emotion. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, there are so many more questions. Um, well, you could address it. You said you're going to, well, you I think the big here? issue that I'm seeing here tonight is the toxicology piece. What about it? What do you mean, issue? A young man, I don't, I oh, say young man, I don't know who it was, just a minute ago said, you know, what about the ethanol level? And then somebody else is saying it would be really good to get a toxicologist to go over those. I think it would be just for our own edification. Oh, okay. And yeah. it, not to point fingers, the person was drunk, they weren't drunk, they were little, it's just to understand. Yeah. So guys, you know, I'm just tickled by how wonderful this chat has been in asking so many elegant and eloquent and complicated questions. And for me, I'm so honored that you invited me to come on. Yeah, um, thank you. Come I, I thank you so very much. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying. That's all I can say. I, I'm nobody's perfect, but I, I'm just so tickled. It makes me so happy. The level of questions. Do you know, we've talked about it. So some of this stuff, I already knew what she was going to say. I was trying to find parts in the articles. So I had them for her to present it because this is mostly for you guys. Okay. So I tried to freaking find the part. I was trying to like find different parts. Plus I was trying to uh, look at chat because I get yelled at for ignoring chat or not starring comments. I'm only one person. So I was trying to get comments started. I was trying to look at chat and put chat chat up on the yeah. screen like, I'm so sick of this. and i was tired um, she's a part of me i was tired but you know what more for you guys i know it, we went i personally this. think honestly from my perspective i'm a chatterbox and i think you listened quite well to me while you're trying to handle chat and look up articles and look at the odds i mean this is a lot this is a very complex platform and I want to thank you. I don't feel that you weren't listening to me. I was. I was listening. And of course, there's times that I'm trying to do chat or I'm trying to find a thing. Sure. I'm only one person. Gosh darn it. And I get criticized when you're ignoring. I'm out of here. You didn't read my chat. I'm out of here. You're not paying attention to chat. Does she ever look at chat? Does she ever look at chat? Oh, how do you expect me to do that? How, how can I do a million things at once? Let me tell you something funny. I, let's leave with this great comment. <laughs> Dolly Belfiore, I love that name, Belfiore, which means beautiful flower, says, let's look at the difference in the complexion between doctoras, whatever they call me, doctora Latina or whatever, and Zav. I'm like, oh, you're red and I'm uh, like brown. Oh my God. <laughs> Is that your camera? Or are you really red? I'm probably, if I'm getting all worked up, I don't know. All um, right. Don't I don't it. know what it is, but I'm no. tired. I feel wore out, but and now I'm mad. I'm I've been very yeah. upset the last few days of the attacks. I am. It's really yeah. Upsetting. Well, guess what? People are jealous, and you you are you know climbing the rungs of this little community, and you know it's hard. I know it's hard to let it, whatever the expression is, roll off your back or whatever. I want you to be you know, of good courage. Avanti con coraggio. Adelante con valentia, as we say. Go forward with courage. I know, but it's hard then when I get chat, when I see chat. Well, you see, you're, you're getting a little bit oh, upset. It's hard. Support. You like, you like, like ah! you to defend yourself. To say, you know, let me draw myself back. And, and, and you know what? All is well. It's good. I want you to know it's all good. You're, you're really doing a lovely job. No, because now I'm going to, people are going to go out and say that I wasn't listening to you because of, I was tired. So my eyes were going like this at a time and I was like trying to find things. Wait, but I didn't know that's hello. Wait, I was I, rude to Dr. Latina. I wasn't no, listening. Not, do I count for my opinion? You were not rude to me. I told you it was a privilege and an honor to be your guest and 
I personally couldn't handle like looking at chat, looking at doc. I'm, that's why I'm saying, pull this one up, pull that one up. You know, no, you're doing an excellent, uh, excellent job. And, you know, you know. I know. I thought b before going in, I had everything re like in my head. I'm like, okay, this is the part of this article. This is the part of this. And I have them all pulled up. And I thought I was going to remember where each if thing was. Have... I couldn't find it for you, though. Look, okay. I, find it. Um, I was like, wait, where Guys, is it? Guys, yeah, help me here. Help me out. <laughs> no, but I'm just you... disappointed. I thought I would remember and I couldn't find them in the freaking articles. I don't understand you, where they are. You were. don't have to. You don't have there. Yeah, I do. Wait, do you know one of my favorite expressions? What? Okay, look at look at pretend you're looking at me in the eyes and look <laughs> at the camera wherever you see me. Yeah. This is high. This is one of my favorite expressions that I have to tell myself all the time. There is here, and you're gonna say it after me. There not I'll say the first the whole thing, and then we're gonna all repeat you. <laughs> there is no such thing as perfection. Go ahead. There is no such thing as perfection. There is only. There is only. Progress towards perfection. Progress towards perfection. Try it again. Now, let's say the whole thing. There is. There's no such thing as perfection. Only progress toward perfection. Example. <laughs> and that's the truth. Who do you think you are? Well, a lot of these people, there's a lot of people that think they're perfect. I know. I know. You know, we're, this, we're supposed to be I would love to see some of those people that criticize me up here doing what I'm doing. It looks easier than this, it is. But. This is supposed to be a moment of fellowship and affiliation. Does that, can I, can I, I've never done this before, but can I, do I have your permission to say, put a one if this or put a two if yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Put a one. If you think everybody has to be perfect, put a two. If you think we're progressing towards perfection, one, if we have to be perfect, two, if we're all progressing towards it, is anybody going to, oh, we got a bunch of twos. I've never done this before. <gasps> Mama Mia thinks we have to be perfect. Okay. Oh, twos. I'm feeling good here. But of course, I'm not perfect. So yeah, see how many people agree. You do not need to be. And I want to know who this Dr. M Latina is. I'd love to find that, who that person is. Twos, look at all these twos. You see, people are saying you do not have to be perfect. Here, look at this. What Oh, I lost it. Vigilian T said something. I used to think, oh, shoot. I'll have to go back and look. Something like I used to think I had to be perfect, but I realized I have to be perfect in the progressing towards perfection, basically. See, yeah. no one is perfect. But try to absorb. Look at this and absorb everything that people are saying. Copri is saying, we. <laughs> I want, I see, people go, so, for being upbeat and happy, I have extreme anxiety. I do too. At some point, I'm going to do a, like an episode on, I'm not happy and hee hee ha ha. Um, there's a part of me that is, but I, I do struggle also with anxiety and a little bit of, of melancholy. And so I have different things that I, different little tools and little exercises that I use to try to bring myself to a better place. And I think I'm going to do some of that, like examples of those kind of things on my channel. <sighs> yeah. Oh, I she should, you've, had but... wedding, you've had two wedding proposals. Oh yeah. Uh. Yes. Apparently you yeah. have. Um, I don't know. I didn't see yeah. any of them, but and uh, oh. Mama Mia is asking, yes, that that can happen, but yeah, that laryngospasm does it can happen, but usually before. The, the, the larynx spasms, because I've actually had that happen to a patient in my office. It was awful. Um, where they spasmed and they couldn't breathe. It was just a terrible thing. But before the spasms, what I had said to folks two hours ago now, when you first are submerged in water, if you're alive, what happens is you have a reflex that comes from the central nervous system, especially if it's cool water, and you go... <gasps> So before you, then you spasm. So it's the first reflex is to, 
And then that's where you're aspirating. And that's where you're going to get your liquid or your aspirated uh, fluids down the uh, windpipe. And P.S., I want to say one more thing. This is totally off the subject. This is about the autopsy. In drowning, not only do you see the foam and the fluids, but you um, very often will see um, uh, silt and dirt and anything that's in the lake or dirty water, and that is seen in the stomach, and that is seen in the trachea and the, and the bronchi. And none of that was seen there either. So, Turquoise works at a nursing home. God bless you, because that is something unbelievable. And thank you for your service. All right. And yes, your music from Kat, your opinion does matter. Why are you saying that, <laughs> Juliet? I know. Oh, I did get a marriage proposal. Okay. Who? Did I see one of them. I don't know who else. There were, apparently there were two. Pencils have erasers for. A oh, Paletti says she's pretty imperfect. Well, I would say I am too. Lauren, we love just the way you are. Pencils have erasers for a reason. We are not all perfect. Exactly. Thanks, Lauren. And thank there you, you for, that, for the super chat. And thank you, music from Kat. But your opinion does matter. I'm not sure why you said that. Maybe she was being, see, you don't know the tone. She could have been being um, sarcastic. Okay, guys, I, I do. My daughter has given me the, the 15 minute warning, the 10 and the 5. And you know things have gone on too long when the 23-year-old daughter is telling the 61-year-old mother, you need to stop now. Oh, my God. You Look, Amy McClellan. Yeah. Love that well, name. God. No, Kenny, like you. the Kenny. Oh, my God. Kenny Knackers wants yeah. to marry you. Oh, my word. Oh, somebody asked Italian. I'm both. Spanish, Italian, Italy, Argentina, Doctora. No, and I'm Doctora. Because I'm a female. So it wouldn't be doctor. It would be doctora. And I'm usually called doctora Salerno. Doctora Latina. Okay. I'll oh, he's cute. I'll marry you. But we'd have to live in a neon disco. <laughs> oh, I didn't even catch the ending. All I saw was a neon disco ball. I didn't hear that. I didn't see that. I'll marry you. That is <laughs> cute. <laughs> wow. Oh, somebody's so asking him can Zeke come on? Oh my He's God! In bed. He's Queen in Elizabeth, bed. look, that she would marry you. Oh my word! Oh Lord, you're getting then all. Why am I single if I'm such a catch and so many people want to marry me? Where are you at in my real life? I'll tell you I why. Can't, because I you're can't real meet life. anybody. I'll tell you why because your real life is in a green room with multi-colored bricks. Well, what do I just do? I don't go out to bars anymore. Like, so how do I meet people? Like, come on, guys, I'm right here. I'm single. I'm looking. Okay, well then, just maybe you should put that out there because th this is the problem of your generation of in the 20s, 30s, 40s, well, <clears throat> 50s and 60s is that everybody's virtual. How do you go out and meet people? There is no, I guess you know, I travel to different states but i don't know yes. how serious some of these people are. You know, you know, how long people say things but is this a, like how serious like i'm talking about like you know what i'm saying how when do i take somebody look zyra that? just said i'll date you zav Who? robert says marry me before i crack i mean obviously <laughs> i'll marry from canada ontario come on you need to go back and write all of these down good night alexa c brown Beware. Somebody at Jazzy says go to Home Depot. Home Depot and look. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, That's guys, it. where is any like uh, anybody making a trip to Ohio? Any uh, <laughs> I think S. Hockett has said one of the most truthful things. Read that. You're single because you are a perfectionist which you're supposed to be a progressionist, not a perfectionist, and you're on YouTube 24 and 7. Can we do a dating game? Come on, that would be fun. That would be, but... I would love to be oh friends. Oh, Lord, who would be the the host or something? I would be. <laughs> I could be the host because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm too old. Z Look at Patty Cakes. I'm waiting for beaded breath. For an, oh, for an oh, I don't know. I, know. I'm trying to, I was trying to find the question. I don't see Oh, it. Lord. Oh, K 
Kenny Nacker says it's not safe over there in the United States of America. Oh. He says, come to me in Australia. All saying. Oh. So all saying, is that a picture of you on this? Is that really you on there? He is I'm in Ohio. Ohio. Oh, you're in Jason. No, you're in Columbus, right? Listen, this all saying guy, that photo looks like a 30 year old photograph or more of that cruise dude who who's the cruise the famous um actor so is that not even you a picture of you that's not all saying he's too cute to be on freaking 11 15 p.m eastern daylight savings time true crime don't you think wait are you but so you're you're accusing where are you uh saying that that's not him are you trying to say like he's lying I, listen, or, but I don't even know if he's claiming it is let me, let me who knows if he's claiming he doesn't have to claim who he is but i know that when i was like you know 20 years ago and i would i was on different dating sites and i these men would present themselves with a, a photo decent i'm not saying like that good looking i'm just saying like they're decent chap you know they're okay we would chat but can i take you out sure i'd meet, meet them i'd be like oh no, please. And you know, I'm five eleven, and they claim that they're six feet, and I meet them, and they're five two. I'm like, no, stop it. And a lot of them oh, were married. Yeah, they probably. Yeah, they you have that. Yeah, no, Maybe no, no. I don't discriminate, so I, I don't, I don't discriminate on who I date. So I, but uh, what I discriminate about is misrepresentation. Don't tell me you're single when you're married. Don't oh, tell me I know. I'm talking about something. I was talking about her oh. question. Oh, don't uh, tell me you're six feet when you're five two. Oh, I'm sorry. You were talking. Why would they feet. even do that when you're gonna figure out when you meet them? So they obviously don't really want to meet you, right? Because I met them. I went out with them. They're like, you know, I'm but like, they yeah. thought what they thought that, that you were gonna have that connection beforehand, and it wouldn't matter. That they exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. But uh, then again, I did and did get married, and that didn't work. And yeah, well, you know, that's a whole nother song and dance. Hi, Dios. I'll tell you. C12 EH asks you, do you like heavier guys? Hello? Wait, what? <laughs> C12 something H. Wait, where? Just, I don't, I don't oh, even I just see lost it. him. He, he went out of the thing. He said, do you like heavier guys? Do I like, I don't, I, I, it's more about like just the person. I don't know. Wait, this other guy says he's a solo dad of two. I mean, there's so many, oh my word. What's wrong? Oh, GC or G -G. You're from Ohio. What part of Ohio are you from? I'm trying to like read everybody. You look amazing. Um, Here's C12EH. Must, I bet you that's, I don't know what that stands for. He said, do you like heavier guys? I'm cuter than us. Well, did All Saint ever answer if that was a picture of him? He didn't. We know it's not. <laughs> Wait, why? I bet you. Tries to be dating oh. somebody, says. Jenna says she's an Akron. Somebody else says we should do a dating game. I don't know how we would do it, though. <laughs> I don't know either. Um... Thanks, guys. Wow. Else, now you guys just, oh, you're making me like blown up my head here. No, I don't think it's well, possible. Well, we know that you're already blushing. <laughs> well, no, I was red before that, but maybe what you're you blushing. Done? I don't know. I don't feel like I'm blushing. Does it look, seem like it? Honey. I feel like I was red before that, though. Okay. Um, oh, Michelle. Somebody says that I'm attracted to brains and humor. Somebody else said that some guy's a hottie. Oh, Wait, Lord. Shane, will you is that you or not? I might have missed it. Okay, Ossane, come on. Tell us, tell us, really. I just want to know, just so I know when I see the picture, is like, okay, that's you. Um single dad, 51 with a five-year-old son. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, I know the math is strange. Lol. Well, she's only 41. That's not strange. Which part of the math is strange? And you were 45 when you had your child. That's not strange either. Now, I didn't get the guy's name, but that's a shame because he sounds good. I think you're beautiful. If you come to the UK, I'd love to cook you dinner and date. Oh, my Lord. You're getting all these offers. I know, you guys. Maybe I should have a dating show. 
<laughs> narrow it down here. No. Oh, soulmate, soul for music seventy nine says he says that's his picture. He says that's him. Okay, mm. I, so I always thought it was. I don't have any reason why. Looking I think it's, but, but why? And he looks you... awfully young. I mean, I not for. I mean, you look a lot younger than you are. But that all sane dude looks like he's thirty or something. Oh, look at this. Ashley says, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I'm 27. I'm almost a four-year-old kid. He's pretty dope. Let's go at Zav Girl. Ah, this is going too fast. You're getting so many freaking offers. I, I know. Let's, I maybe, can't believe let's organize it. a dating show because I, I um, want to meet somebody. I 41 mean, said they thought you were 33. You do look like I'm you're 33. 41, guys. So you, everybody but knows. it doesn't matter. I'm only 5'2". I'm, I'm not so going to lie about my height. I'm only 5'2". I just want to give out my uh, credentials. Your stats? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh my God. Walker dating and Zav is red as a tomato. I thought oh she was God. into girl. Oh, you're into girls? It says. I said, I don't discriminate. I, I, I'm into anybody. You, you go with anybody. Okay. The person. I go for the person, not the gender. The it's the person, you know? Okay. And then somebody said you're pocket sized. <laughs> Amy McClay, she's really putting it on here. She's because she's from the UK. She's the one that said she's taking a date. Blah, blah, blah. She's five two as well. Um, okay. Wait, yeah, this could be a date. Oh, you're wait, you're only five two. What? You seem like you're taller on your videos. Wait, are you saying? Are you? Oh my gosh! Wait, hold on. This one what? says Penny something says she's sixty. Penny Couch says she's sixty four and wants to play. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay, maybe I'm gonna start getting red now. Wait, wait, I'm gonna get my church says Pearl Altas as a singles group. Wait, this can we slow this down? Show up. So you're saying at there's a one chance. of them. Look around. You will find someone. I'm Michael, look Jenny at Michael McCallister says that you're a perfect size. Oh my god, this is going too fast. Can you slow it down? There you go, Michael. Look, is the doctor single? I uh, have a double yes. dating show. <laughs> <laughs> the I am single, the but I, I'm, I, I'm in I'm in divorce recovery at this point. Uh, so, but thank you, Michael. Um, Elaine, what do you mean? Pick Kim McKen says this is hysterical. You have to have some hilarity. Oh, Dina says I'm 58. Will divorce my husband and marry you, Zav. Oh my word! What? You, got, but you guys are just saying. I feel like they're just saying that. I don't so think what if they're just saying? This is, yeah, but I'm talking about some like, serious. Are you, are you guys being I, serious? Or are you just saying? Who that? knows? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> Somebody it else says to me. It matters to me. <laughs> no, what matters is that you're getting your serotonin levels up. But I want to know if these are if I have a right to begin. Levels off. Is this legit? Oh, lordy. Somebody says they're thank goodness we have a doctor because they're dying over there. Um, my dog is wiggle waggling her chin at her collar and meaning she needs to go chi chi. Um, let me see. I uh, Kendra Leia says, I love the Grateful Dead. Do you want to date? Wait, who um, I love the Grateful Dead? Who said that? Uh, oh, Rob, okay, somebody. Bobby, Canada. What part of Canada are you from? I love to kid and and let's have a cute little puppy. Wait, who? Where? I'm not reading all the ones you're yeah, reading. This is just too much. <laughs> oh my word! This Wait, is turning where into is a it? Spotlight. She's on lines. Wait, Mary Young what kind of a dog would you have with her? Where do you see that? Well, that's somebody else's. The guy just offered. He's from Canada. That he would take you out and get have a dog together. And somebody's asking what kind of dog. Julia, oh, I'll give you the first that, dibs because not first dibs. I don't want to say it like that. Kate says that she dates you have men, but she would ask you out. Wait, who? Kate M says she dates men, but she would ask you out. Um, be what they want to be on a keyboard. I am old now, says this Texas Sunshine. And happily, where the heck did the Texas Sunshine go? I, I didn't get to read it. It's too fast. Huh. You Zav, you're gorgeous and brilliant. You are. You could have anyone in the world that you want. The world is in your like hands. That. I love I dogs and cats. All music except. Oh, here, here's my dog. Come here. Can you say hi? Oh, say why did hello. that do that? Wait, hold on. How did that just come up? Okay, there we go. Oh, how's it, doggy? Oh, this, is, this is Melita, right? Okay. <laughs> 
You need to push it. Mm-hmm. You push it. Oh, class. I know. I have to be careful with that. I know. Oh, it's a babe. Oh, what's their dog's name? How cute. This is Met mine. Aww. Oh, she said thank you. Her name is Mella. Blah blah blah. I die one. <laughs> well, I don't even know how to do this now. Like, if you okay, we're gonna have to have a little counseling session because oh, I mean, I'm good at reading the comments. I, I think I'm very slow. Like, I don't want to pass up potential. I'm into men, so I, I don't know if it's a man, and the person can't be over 65, probably. <laughs> Where is the one that said the dead dead head? Where are you from? Where is it at? Public. There you go. There you go. Everyone submitted to. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's that's good. Somebody said. Um. Uh, somebody said to, to press, make push the, the. Okay, I don't want to know what they said. Wait, I'm. I, somebody said something about my dog. I want to know about my dog. Okay. Where's the dead head? Where are you from? I think there's a couple dead heads. Where are you guys from? I can't find the comment now. Oh, her hair. Thank you, Southern girl. Yes, okay. we could do a members only dating. But then I don't want to exclude somebody that potential. Well, let me think how we could do this. You guys, I'm like, as much as we're having fun, said, but like, hey, I'm really said, serious too. How Katie Bug said, Zap, my mom thinks you're hot. Who? Katie Bug said, Zav, my mom thinks you're hot. Aww. Oh, thanks for joining me. Mac and Zibaloo. Wait, didn't you join the other day? So did you just upgrade maybe? It doesn't tell me like on this side. Let me see. Thank this you. Is, this is a, um, a, uh, an English Springer field spaniel. So she's a hunting dog. And I have to throw the ball or run around with her for at least 90 minutes a day. Oh, gosh, Amy McClyche is it just won't give up. Oh, she says, actually, I didn't even know. Call me. What? Amy McClyche from the UK won't give up. She said she believes she's your soulmate. Oh, really? Actually, yeah. I never knew. Okay, well, and you were uh, like deadhead too. This okay. is a 41 year old, we 41 year old single father. Oh, I'm blushing. What's that? Here. 5'11", damn it, 230, I lost his vitals, but he's into you, too. I don't know, man. You know, I need to get up in the morning. Whatever this is going on here, this person loves it. Ah. Oh, Julia says, my mom thinks you're hot. That's amazing. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, you're talking about somebody else that said that. Okay, I see. Somebody um, else says, five-bedroom house. Yeah. Five baths with three fireplaces and a pool in... I didn't catch where that was. My son met a young... Wait, somebody met a young Italian girl from years ago and it's still he loves her to this day. Well, that's good, but are they together or is it just from afar? Wait, who... I this, somebody said that their son met an Italian girl and he loves her to this day. Well, did they ever get together? Rob, I'm an Rob, Italian me. girl. I'm... Is she Italian? Italian <laughs> Rob Robbie from Canada says I'm an hour west of Toronto, in an hour and a half southwest of Niagara Falls, and I have a Chihuahua. Yeah, that's not too too far from me. Okay, so we'll have to see if I ever. You ever come it go, come this way? Well, you know what you could if you need a chaperone, I can fly to the that point of destination, and I can just chaperone you guys until you feel comfy. Yeah, I'll have to have like a buddy with me to meet people. Yes, like little, this. You know, a little, little safety net. <laughs> Somebody says Dr. Latina is so into this. Come on, you know, this is important for the for the serotonin levels, for joy, for you know, all that. 
Yes, I am a love doctor. No, I'm not. I'm a medical doctor. A Zav mixer. Wow. Hmm. Can we please have Dr. Latina back? I would love to come back if I'm invited. Mm hmm. You, of course, you are. Or, of course, you will be. Um, well, he said, oh. said Catherine Schaefer said that's a great idea, dear. That's a great idea, and I've lost her. The Dr. Latina will chaperone lol. Definitely something, something. I don't know. Thanks that, for joining, Sophia. So many, did you? Oh, is this what you read, uh, Doctor? Um, I just want to call you Amy, but I don't know what to call you. you. you read, are you a medical doctor or the love doctor? Well, I, be a, I have been very successful at, uh, at you know, getting folks oh together. I just haven't been so successful personally in my own love journey. Doctora Saler, I mean, Latina will now also be known <laughs> as the love doctor. That's funny. Um, well, my name is in English, Amy, and we say in Spanish amada or amata in Italian, and that means beloved. So I am the love doctor. There you go. Yeah, we can. Okay, we could actually really kind of do a dating show where they could come up on panel. And if yeah. you want it private, we could just do a members live where only members could watch it. But I'm not a member I, because I don't want, want to give you too much money. But could I still be the, yeah, the um, because, chaperone hostess? You no, know, and even the people that wants to come up to like be potential dates they don't have to be members because i could just send you the link but the people watching so oh people that's watching good be members. yeah that's good. i don't know or i could do it for everybody but i think that's more of a members thing because i haven't done any members lives yet what do you guys think somebody or, see somebody said i'm not a member and they said they feel left out they're not a member either oh see i don't want to make people oh, feel thank you out. you liked my women in body image uh somebody i don't know who said that my women and body, it only got very few people looked at it, but I thought it was pretty good. Women and body image issues and things. Oh, it was a video I did. How about everyone that's interested, send an email. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. To Dr. Latina and she goes over them with you. Yes. I can give, uh, how will we give, well, I usually don't, I mean, I have my, my channel email. But if I give it out here to everybody, then I'm going to get a thousand people wanting to date her. I don't really have time to go through a thousand. <laughs> I don't think that. But when it comes down to it, I don't think it'll be. Puedo hablar en español citas amorosas cada noche antes de dormir y cada mañana, amor. Okay, Zara says. That's what, that but she, what I said is you don't have to be a member to actually join the panel, right. just to be watching. So, no, anybody, I could send the link to anybody, but maybe I'll do it for everybody. Go ahead, though. Sorry, I don't mean it. No, somebody, Zyra just said that she would be able to whisper sweet nothings to you before falling asleep and in the morning, my love. Oh, <laughs> I don't see that, but oh, where is it at here? I don't know. It's gone. Kathy Harvey, you know, somebody else said that they thought it's really fun. I only have, but the thing is, I only have a, a, a certain space here. It's in my bedroom. So it's like everything is crammed. I have two computers. There's no other way to do this. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. heart, you're right. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see. Now we're just having giggles. Oh, me encantas a la doctora Latina Spicy. Well, thank you. I don't think I'm spicy, but okay. Panel dating meet and greet. I think so. Do you know, Zav Girl, are you still there? Yeah. You can't She's see me. She's just by all this. <laughs> I'm just people. reading. <laughs> when, when um when it became the pandemic my family which is rather spread out about eight of us met for a cocktail party on zoom we had hors d'oeuvres and cocktails and we laughed you could do that you did i think oh. you could do that well uh stephanie stewart is voting for all sane 
Oh God, Amy McLeish. I don't know if I'm spelling, saying that correctly. Is everyone looks discombobulated looking at the word discombobulated? Oh, Reese. Well, I should go. I mean, this is this has really been quite. I know. Wow, what an end to this. I don't know. I don't really have a type. You should see the people I've dated. They are there. If you look at like a picture, I mean, there's not a type. <laughs> there really isn't. It's just like the person. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to say it. I, I really can't say my type because I don't know what it is. That's it's all right. Random. It's random. Upside down. You know what's really interesting? <clears throat> I'm fun when I know people in a small group, but I am the quintessential introvert. I don't like to go out. I don't like to go to bars or I'm just, I'll go to a cafe, meet up with somebody, take my knitting. I'm very, but if, if I know people, like I don't know you guys, but I know Zav, I can, you know, interact. Yes. Do you see what Morph Retro says? Uh -huh. The biggest issue dating is knowing yourself enough to know what your boundaries are and judging the other person not to violate those boundaries and trust that they know themselves well. I totally, totally agree. Um, Ashley, <laughs> you're correct. She antique is, has enjoyed herself and she loves us. That's great. Oh, little, little bit. Sorry, a little bit says yes, yes, yes. Introvert here, love to stay home and spend time with someone. Yeah, it's, it's, um, now somebody else, Journey of Justice says pansexuality is sexual romantic, wait, <laughs> or emotional attraction towards people regardless of sex, age, or sex or gender identity. So they're saying you're probably, I, I don't like categories. I don't like, like labels, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't discriminate. Whatever. Anything, but yeah, no, I mean, no, you're fine. I'm not upset that you said no, that. No, I didn't say that, but I'm just reading that off. What they're saying is that you, you go for the person, not the yes. category. Exactly. Yeah. Somebody wants to know, oh, we're back yeah. with C12EH. You never answered the question. Would you consider a, an overweight gentleman? And he would like to know your, and you didn't answer that. And he'd like to know what age range would you consider? And yes, I said any, there's no exclusions. At, that's what I was saying. I'm more the person, like rather than physical. Um, okay. And what, what and, um, is, age range. Oh, shoot. I don't even know. I haven't really, I don't think I really have an age range. Why? How are, how old are you? <laughs> he, he's a, an octogenarian he's about to be 81 but you know I, oh michelle clifford says she or he she is 64 tyler is not married that is true lol lol lol, lol. i don't know if you guys talking about an autopsy <laughs> Petunia says, I left you guys talking about an autopsy and now I came back and you're talking about dating. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Ashley Leith says that she's 17 and she hopes that's cool with you with a kiss. Oh Lord of mercy. You, you, you just <laughs> got a lot of people. Wow. How are, I, I got to wind this down. Somebody's saying they're having fun. I do knit. Renee, I do. Wait a minute. Where is... Let me get my latest project. I am just about four inches away from completion of this seed stitch for a friend from Colombia, actually. It's going to be an, an infinity scarf. Can y'all see it? Oh, yeah. Nice? Yeah. Wow. I think if I ever made um, one for you, it would have to be like every color here. Yeah. I would like, right. can you do like tie dyed kind of looking one in a way I, I don't? Yeah. Maybe I'll do one. Do you like a, an infinity scarf or just a short, like a cowl or what would you want? Do you know what an infinity scarf is? Once I get it together, it'll it'll be like it wraps around and oh. it doesn't come apart. It, it's in a oh, circle. Okay, okay. Or you can have a cowl, which is, let's say, one short, literally short thing like, oh, let me see. A cowl would be like if I made something like 
uh, just like this short that you could just put over your, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, wait. What would you prefer? This would be a cowl. So it's just very short. You kind of put it over your, uh, this is not a cowl, but you would put it over your head like this on a cold day and it would just be, just wrap you around like that. Or you could have something really long, long. in a circle. And Probably then, long. I don't know, though. Usually I have long ones, but sometimes they annoy me because they're full. I, I, maybe I think you'd be better for a cow because... Yeah, let me try that because I need are, one of those. But they say somebody, a little package person. Yeah. But what if I did, because I ha do have yeah. somebody next on my list, but what if I did a tie-dye one for you? You like that? Oh, my God. Yeah. You wear it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, somebody says they love uh, them. They are versatile. They are versatile. Yeah, I'm a, a, definitely a scarf person. Okay. So people do, they approve of my seed stitch. You see that? This oh, is it's cool. Sort of, yeah, that's awesome. It's a little bit mindless. Like I used to do gloves and mittens and v neck sweaters and all kinds of things. But, you know, sometimes you, then you have to keep track of what you're doing. This, I'm just like, you know. How long does it take you to do one of those? Well, this one's has well, I was watching my daughter made me watch Halloween, that first from 1960s or something movie. I was really scared. And I spent like I must have gotten like 10 inches done just that night because I literally was watching have you heard of Halloween? I I you know, with what's the movies. Name? Yeah, dude. I usually we used to do marathons in college of and then when the new ones come out, I always like to watch them. Yeah, I'm a like, big just Halloween. Went to one. But I literally was like, I hate scary things, and I was like this. Like so, I <laughs> so I I did it like ten inches during that movie the other wow. night. Wow. Huh. Okay. Wait, you watched the new one or? No, my daughter just went. Francesca just went to the new one. With I want to see that. I'm gonna. I'm supposed to take my nephew. But which one were you watching then? The first ever oh, one. Oh, the first one. That's my daughters watch those all the time, and I can't. I was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. They were like, you do true crime. I'm like, I know, but I just. Uh, but my daughter, Francesca said that she didn't like the new one too much because she felt that they, they, that they compressed very quickly different relationships. And she said too much happened. They tried to squeeze way too much in to the plot in too okay. short a time. That was just her opinion. Okay. I still, I'm going to check it out because I want to see it. But I wonder. Oh, if did you see what this person said? Zav, you have no idea what a catch you are. I love you and hope the person so of your dreams come in, comes into your life very soon. That's so Beautiful. Sweet. Thank you. Look at this. Rob Robbie from Canada says, for your information. Oh, he's cute. Um, I'm also a recovering addict. You see? Wow. Okay. People. I think I need to leave you here. I am knitting right now, says somebody. Wait a minute. On an infinity loom. That's interesting. Star flower. Is that what it is? Dr. Love Tina. <laughs> Make a date for us. <laughs> Dr. Love Tina. At All Spain, you're getting a tie dye beanie. I am doing that for him. That's interesting. Oh, look, Jacqueline Whiting says he's, oh, Todd Patty says he's a free, he's a sugar free daddy. Oh, I thought he was sugar daddy. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, somebody else said there, Jacqueline Whiting, Whiting says she's a recovering addict as well. Dina Joe says Rob is hot. Okay, he's cute. I mean, you know, this is, you, you guys could just go on and on and on. Oh, hey, Jesse, Lin, Jesse Lynn says that she wants to learn how to knit, do a class on YouTube. Listen, I, I taught, um, a class when my kids were like in second and fourth grade or something like this. I don't know. First of all, um, and we did knit being uh, newborn hats for uh, babies in Africa and we just knit up a storm. They're easy to do. Uh, somebody thinks I'm funny. Okay. You are funny. I don't know about that, but what do you mean? You don't think you are. <laughs> Come on, nobody, no one wants a sugar-free daddy. So what, okay, I know what a sugar daddy is. What would a sugar-free, does he mean he's literally sugar-free? He doesn't eat sugar? I'm or guessing, I'm guessing that he's broke. 
me. I don't know. I don't know. Because if you think about what a sugar did, I don't know. Maybe he just means sugar free. Maybe he's. Wait, somebody else is in the knitting. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, sorry. I'm, I would do a knitting with Doctora, says Kim Cleanse. Oh. There you go. And Jenna, that's where I graduated. I started out at Bowling Green and I ended up graduating at Kent. So you're in Ohio? What part of Ohio? Oh, I get it. He's a sugar-free daddy, i.e. he has no money. He's broke. That's what That's I okay. said. I, I take a while to get these little subtleties. Zyra says she loves to outdoors, travel, hiking, road trips. And this could go on and on and on. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Oh, gracias. Yeah, can, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I don't think of it. I don't even consider yeah, it. Well. It's, like it's, it's an herb. It's natural. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, man, I need to like sit. No, I need to like need, sleep. We, and... <laughs> we need some planning here. I know, but I know what's going to happen. And I'm just not like, it's just going to all go. Shh. So what? You can have fun with the process. Okay. But you don't think I like it. We should try. I don't know. I would like to really make something out of it. though. Well, make, well okay. <laughs> you and I need to do some back, you know, some but green room. Be safe. Yeah. Plan. And we can we can set up some sort of a whatever it's called. But you know what the problem is? I'm gonna have to set parameters. I can see, guys. I would have to. Oh, somebody's been sober for ten years now. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Shell Clifford. What I think is that I would have to be. I I would have to set up. That's okay, Todd. You're broke. You're cute. Um, <clears throat> uh, I can't go on. This is going on. Maybe I better leave chat because this is. Listen, what I think we should do is we would have to set parameters because I could see you interviewing each person for an eight hour live you would never get to person number two i know i know how would yeah i would have to have somebody controlling like yeah to make I, sure I, that they take I, charge I, I and and she'd ring the bell and say it's been five minutes next and no, it's not my choice i have no control over it. somebody else has to do it oh we would okay you would have francesca titi yeah. would you run uh the bell on a a dating uh, what's it called? Fast dating game? Yeah. Yep. She says, yeah. So that Zav doesn't go like five hours with one prospective person. We, it's speed dating. What? She wants, we're going to do, we're going to see if we can set her up with somebody for speed dating. Speed date? Sure. So she would, <laughs> and Julia, you email me. I don't have your email. I don't think, do I? You got my email and then we could exchange and then the you, contact you information. Ring the you bell. Email me. Mine's public. Minutes. She cool. says it sounds fun. She's willing to okay. do it. Let's do it. All right. Well, all right. God, that's not just good night, all. all right. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Somebody, like Krista, I effing love you. And I wish I had someone like you to be my wing woman. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, folksy wokesies. God bless to everybody. I hope you learned something. Thank you for, you know, listening and sharing all your thoughts and this has just been delightful and stay tuned for yes. part three on my little channel i just have a tiny little channel but uh no, and i'll be back it's going good in your yeah thank but, you for coming on and um, i'm here to just you know affiliate fellowship you know that kind of thing i and and, and you know I, I i like this so okay folksy folks just please come to my channel though sometime and maybe i will do a knitting session or something but i have there to get you go maybe yeah, my grandma can join my grandma she oh, used to admit, but how, old is your grandma? how old is she how old 90 she'll be turning what 92 in november i oh, think she knit. Yeah. my mom knits she's 91 my daughter's knit very well it's not just for the the mature no i okay. know young people are knitting now yeah all right i'm um, going to see unsolved cases her two sons i mean this could go on and on we have so many positive stories good night god bless thanks for having me come to my little part of town sometime and talk to you soon all right thank you so much bye, bye. bye guys adios mis amigos adelante con valentia go forward with courage arrivederci and as my father used to say avanti con coraggio Go forward with courage. Bye. All right. Bye, Amy. Thank you. Uh -huh. Whew, wow, that was crazy. Um, no, honey bear, I didn't. I, I actually dated somebody last summer.
for a few months, but no, but before that, since I've been, look at the blurry from the green screen. Ever since like I've been sober, like since since I started my uh, recovery. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, I haven't dated much because I've been focused on that and just busy. And then, like I said, I did uh, date last summer. But yeah, besides that, no, it's been a while before that. I'm trying to think before that um, in Colorado. So <laughs> I'm overdue. Uh, cause yeah, that was last, wait, 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 today it was, yeah, it was last summer. It doesn't even seem like that long ago. Whoa. Seems like that was just late yesterday. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, my crime channel. We're still on the crime channel. What do you mean? All right, guys. Well, thanks. I am going to get some sleep and um. If any of you guys are really serious? Let's do this. <laughs> no, but I will have to be safe, and because you know, there's a lot of crazies out there, and I don't know what's sitting on the other side of those this those lap or those uh keyboards, you know. So there's a lot of it could be. I mean. You hear the horror stories, especially being in true crime, you know, so um, I'd have to make sure I'm safe if I actually do meet anybody physically. So, uh, but yeah, let's uh, email me. <laughs> we'll figure something out. Um, well, hopefully you guys learned something. I know it's red. I can't control it. I think it was red before that, but I'm not going to lie and say I'm not blushing. Probably. I probably am. All these people. <laughs> I can't help it. It's like a physical reaction. I, I can't help it. <laughs> um, you're going to sleep. It's really background checks. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to do a bunch of background checks. Um, I know, I know. All right, guys. Well, now I forget what we even learned <laughs> in that. All right, Dr. Latina. Wow. Um, what was I going to say? I feel like I wanted to tell you something at the end. You guys got me all like whew, flustered here. Uh... Zavarini. <laughs> All right, I better end this. But thank you guys. Wow, you got me um kind of looking forward to maybe what's to come <laughs> in the future. So yes, I definitely do. Well, I put like my sobriety first because you know how like dating and being in a relationship, if something goes bad and you're like new and reco you know, in your recovery, it could be kind of dangerous. So I put like all my focus on my recovery and then i just got so zoned into it and then my channel and like i said last year last summer I, um it was actually last spring i decided to i did like a dating app and i met somebody it was uh what was the dating app oh i forget what it's called shoot it's one of the popular ones the one uh i can't think of what it's called now bumble i think it was and i met somebody and dated for a few months and then Oh, yeah, it didn't work out, but, and then right after that is when my dad died, and then, you know what I'm saying now, and it just got sidetracked again, but I am ready again. <laughs> I feel pretty strong in my recovery, and I feel like I'm, I could do it. I'm strong enough. Um, but yeah, all right, so, Bye, everybody. Thank you for being here. And yes, definitely. I see that. I, I'm i like, I feel like it's, it's not real, though. I mean, no, I'm not saying you guys aren't real, but I feel like it's, how could that be? Because where are you guys in my life then? <laughs> if there's so many people. Well, I guess you're right there, huh? So, yeah, never mind. Um. Yes, definitely. All right, Juliet.
Ashley, you got my number already. And um, all righty, guys. I know. I'm I'm kind of uh, all happy now. Not that I wasn't happy before, but I'm, now I'm all happy for a different reason. Because it's I don't know. I'm uh. What's the word for it? I don't even know, guys. <laughs> I'm just so fun. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, I better go. I keep reading because you guys are so <laughs> funny. Don't you? Hey, what? Girl, screen. I know. I have to be smart about that. You're right. Uh, get, I've got a sponsor, so you have a sounding board if anything isn't kosher. Okay. <laughs> Red, don't go. <laughs> You're silly. Or was it Tinder? You know what I do? I did Tinder when I was in Colorado. But actually, I like Bumble better for some reason. I don't know why. There, I'm trying to think. Because when I did Tinder, I was... I don't know. For some reason, I was I liked Bumble better. What do you guys like? I guess I won't need it though if if you know we have this maybe a dating show. <laughs> oh Lori. Um, I don't know outside girl. What what kind of stuff? There was a few things that I wanted to look into with the uh, because I was comparing the the Watts case with the uh, um. The Kylie, the Watts autopsy with the Kylie. So, I mean, there's some interesting things. Like, I'm still a little bit concerned about the reporting limits. Why are they, why were they so much lower on Shanann's? Which I'm, which what that means is the threshold was so much lower on Shanann's autopsy. So basically for it to report positive for the test they gave her, why was it that it only had to, the threshold was lower? But it has to be because they took spleen blood from Shanann and, and Kylie's was, was uh, liver tissue. That's why I was asking Dr. Latina. So I'll have to maybe find somebody that would know the answer to that because I kind of want to know that because they're much lower. Like the ethanol, was, the reporting limits were 10 for both of the ethanols, um, the, both the tests, I should say. I'm, I'm saying it like it's two different ethanols, but they do two different tests. And for uh, Shanann's, they were both 10 for the reporting limit. But for Kylie's, one was 80 and one was... Uh, 10, which the ethanol, I guess that's not a big deal as far as because we have the exact number 88. Shanann's was 128. That's very concerning. No, think about it. Shanann, they found her a couple days later. Yeah, she was in the hot desert, but they it only took them a couple days to find her. What, three days? But Kylie, it took over two weeks. So I think that kind of balances out her being in water and not in the hot desert. You know what I'm saying? So 128 where it was said that 128 ethanol was all decomposition for shenan she did not have any alcohol she didn't drink and we're saying kylie has 88 and she was severely intoxicated i mean there's something not right there um so i don't know because that if if they're saying all of that 128 for Shanann was due to decomposition, I'm sure all, if not most, of the 88 from Kylie's was. So that means she couldn't have been drunk. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not, uh, that bothers me. Because why was everybody saying she was drunk? I know I'm getting back off track, but that that really is bothering me for some reason. Because, I mean, they went on and on. Like I mean, like, see... But yeah, we'll talk about it. Maybe we'll do an open panel to talk about that. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, who was ATTF? Are you in here? She's the one that brought that to our attention. It, what, 30, was it 36 hours, she said, from when they removed her to when they did the autopsy? I'll have to look on the sheets. But we'll go over all that. I don't even feel like bringing it back up right now. But I think it was 36 hours. At least that's what she quoted. Um, ATTF the uh when was it two days ago or no it was yesterday when he did the open panel so yeah I don't oh I forgot to ask Dr. Latina that somebody had a question about that about if that makes a difference because they waited 36 hours but well yeah we'll we'll talk about it more guys but um I know I'm getting off <laughs> I'm getting off track okay 
I will talk to you guys uh, when I talk to you, I guess. I'm not sure when that'll be. I wasn't actually planning on doing a live tomorrow. I was planning on taking the day off because I got some personal things I got to take care of and catch up on. So I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to be doing a live tomorrow. But um, tomorrow is Wednesday. So, I mean, maybe Thursday or Friday we'll do a live. Maybe an open panel. I actually want to cover a, a, a different, a new, uh, not a new case, a different, the uh, Quentin. I want to uh, do another video on Quentin Simon. Um, and then. I'm looking for maybe a new case to cover too, but yeah, definitely want to do another um, open panel. Well, I mean, with these autopsy results, yeah, it really is looking that way. You know, with it not looking, with it not, um, having any of those signs of drowning which doesn't mean it's for sure like you could for sure say it but it's not looking good that none of that i mean nothing points to that from the autopsy besides the exclusion because it's nothing else which i know they do determine that for drowning sometimes but you would hope to find one of those and then the whole alcohol thing that bothers me because sammy said how drunk she was and so did some other people um supposedly like hearsay that we're at the party we don't know for sure confirmed that those people were but you know in like groups or people posting that oh yeah my 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 daughter saw her at the party she was drunk they don't know her or then jane doe too saying she was stumbling and then seeing me yeah i know i keep saying the same thing but those are the things that are bothering me the most that are making me think foul play because of those things so yeah um because why why lie about that if there's not something you're hiding like if not, just be like, no, she didn't have a drink. She was a designated driver. Or, oh, she only had one drink because she was a designated driver. Or she only had one drink because she just didn't want to drink. Or whatever the, the the reason. But the fact that that it seems like that was a lie. I'm going to say allegedly because, I mean, I don't I don't know. I mean, just from the results, it seems like it. Because um, I'm not an expert in, the, in um, reading the toxicology. But to me, it seems like that she couldn't have been drunk. So why would, well, I mean, why would she say that? I just can't understand. So then that, that makes me think that foul play, because why are you going to say that? Just say no. She was the designated driver. You saw that one article where she was supposedly supposed to be the designated driver. It was quoted from Sammy. She was supposed to be the designated driver, but the per she said something like the person that she was supposed to drive went with me or something i gotta find that article again but he or she didn't end up being it well sammy says she ended up drinking they were drinking the same thing she was so drunk and shouldn't have been driving and so it's weird all right guys yeah no misbehaved i that's what i think and that's what's concerning because why did sammy say she was drunk and why did jane doe too say she was drunk and why did all those other people say oh my kids were at the party or my daughter was at the party they don't, or, you know, one of them said they don't, they didn't know Kylie, but they saw her. She was really drunk. Or the one person that said, we were at the party and we told her not to drive. Like we warned her don't drive, but she left alone. And, you know, like those stories. Now we don't know for sure if those could be just people making it up saying they were there, but we do know Sammy was at the party and was with her supposedly. So that's just, oh, all right, guys. Um, Thank you, Ellie. Yeah. You'll have to come up on a panel. I'm, inter I'm interested to see what you think now, Misbehave, from now that the, uh, all the results came out. What do you think? We'll have to bring you up next time. Um, all right, guys. All right. I keep saying that. I know that. I'm like that famous for saying that, right? Like saying I'm going to go like a million times <laughs> before I go. But this time I really am because I do have a another appointment in the morning that's like 40 minutes away. So. Um, I want to get some good sleep because I haven't been sleeping that good. I did get it pretty decent sleep last night, but because I was so lacking the days before, I could feel it in my eyes. You know, when you're like lacking sleep and your eyes burn, that's what they've been doing all day, burning and like that real tired feeling. And so I think that's what you guys were seeing when people were like, you're not paying attention to her. Like I was like just very exhausted. I am still very exhausted. That's a part of it. The other part is trying to 
find the spots in the article ready for when for different parts that we were going to talk about. I was trying to get it all ready and I couldn't find half the stuff. So but I do care what she had to say, but that was more for you guys to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like we we worked on this together, so I wanted to focus on reading the chat, getting your questions. And then I wanted you guys to focus on listening to her. You know what I'm saying? Like that was for you guys to listen. It was for me to try to keep the chat going and try to find the things to put on the screen for you. So it didn't matter about me hearing because I already know, you know, that's all. But I guess some people just don't understand it. Oh, actually, you got to quit because now I'm really going to get red. <laughs> Julia, you guys are cracking up. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Bye, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm going to do it while I am getting red. I'm going to, I'll, I have to put that in the description too. And then mods, will you do that? Dr. Latina, I'm going to put your link in the description and then have the mods share it. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Sunshine daydream. I'm crying. Who's crying? Oh. <laughs> Thank you for... <laughs> You're silly. You're... My mouth, wait, your face, oh, my face. God, I am like, what is wrong with me? But I swear I was still at least a little red before all that, but I probably am more red now. Well, we could do lives together, whoever. Uh... <laughs> she can teak. She can teak. Wait, how do you say that? Hold on, let me think how to say that. She can teak. 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 Is it Chikantike? Chikantike. I don't know. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. All right, Karina the Drina. I know everybody's got me blushing. The men and the women. All right, guys. I am gonna leave. Bye, everybody. Have a good day, and uh, see you in a couple days. And I'll put the link in the description. But my mods shared it too. Now I'm going to add it in the description right now as soon as I get off here. Okay. Bye, guys.